the file. This one. Can you tell them to start? Excellent. Fun to bet. Why are we school people? Welcome, everybody, to the Board of Selectmen meeting today, um, Tuesday, April 10th. This is a continuation of the Board of Selectmen meeting. We opened up earlier an executive session for the purpose of approving um, executive session minutes to consider litigation strategy with respect to the petition of uh, Eversource Energy for zoning exemptions because a uh, open session would be detrimental to the litigating position of the board and also to consider the purchase, sale, and lease of uh, real property in relation to Town Hall. And we had Norman, uh, Norman Kamala and Lane Lazarus with us. And now we're opening in, in uh, big, uh, out of executive session and public session and we should start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Is there anybody in the audience who wants to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? You want to come up from the audience? Chief of Lee. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, public forum. Residents are ready to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Anybody up here? Oh, Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Zach Siakos. Um, I'm a resident here in town. I live on 17 Brandon Hill Road. Uh, I'm also one of the owners of uh, Bill's Pizzeria, uh, 14 Main Street. Um, I'm here tonight because I want to bring up an uh, ongoing issue. Um, I think it's a town issue as well as a personal issue for me. Um, that has to do with uh, parking in the downtown area. Um, I know last week you had uh, Mr. Katz here. Uh, he had brought up uh, similar uh, concerns. Um, as of right now, the, our town does not have a municipal lot. Um, the town hall uh, shares the lot behind my building at 14 Main Street. Um, Middlesex Savings Bank is also um, sharing the lot, as well as the Masonic Lodge, which has some property um, that abuts mine. Um, as the town grows and downtown grows, um, I think parking is uh, an ongoing issue. Um, I think it is one that hasn't been addressed yet. Um, and uh, I really think it's going to be more and more important um, as our town grows. Um, there's plans for um, fixing the intersection down on 135 and 85. Um, we have a great new library. Um, we have a freshly renovated town hall, which uh, I hear is soon moving back to um, the original location. Um, so I feel that this is the best time to um, have a serious conversation and figure things out um, whether it's uh, the town creating a municipal lot um, or something else but uh, I felt uh, that slowly um, it is put upon uh, the downtown businesses to figure things out with parking. Um, mine being one of the bigger lots downtown, I feel I would get to the point of having to be the bad guy to start policing my lot um, in order for my customers to have parking. Um, 
As most know, I think uh, that businesses, restaurants, um, salons, whatever it may be, parking is a necessity. Um, business only works with parking. Um, we're not in Florida, you know, it's not a stroll down, uh, you know, Miami Beach. So when it's snowing and it's cold, uh, no one wants to walk to, to come in to get food, um, get a haircut, uh, pick up their clothes, whatever it may be. Um, so my question is, um, and my concern is, what is the town going to do and how can we solve this issue? Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's something we've got to look into. It's a, um, it is an ongoing problem. And um, you know, we're, uh, we're looking at, uh, at options. But um, again, it, it's uh, in tight money years, it gets uh, very difficult to uh, think of uh, what we can do. It's one of those issues that people don't uh, don't think about. It. It's, it's, um, it's an emergency. Well, in fact, Mr. Chair, I would like to just jump in and say that it's not something that we need to look into. It's something that has been looked into and continues to be. Um, and uh, action's been taken in certain circumstances, trying to put offers in on properties uh, that were then purchased by other parties. Um, you know, where the intent was to create some type of a, a, a lot. So um, it's not that it's not for lack of interest right now. It's certainly something that the board is aware of, and uh, the board and town has tried taking action in some time. Nothing's been effective at this point, but it's something that is on the radar at all times. Okay, thank you for your time. Hello. As you know, um, I'm Jean Birchman. I'm the chair of the school committee. And I'm here to speak to you tonight regarding the school committee's request that the turf field project be put on the ballot for May 21st. Um, as you know, we voted on March 29th to move forward with a capital request for a turf field project at a cost to the town of $1.3 million or less than $25 a year to the average taxpayer for a period of 10 years. The school committee has also requested that the turf field be placed on the ballot so that it can be funded as a debt exclusion. Failure to do so will necessitate the project being voted at town meeting as a borrowing within the levy limit. So how did we get here? The school committee first proposed this article last year but withdrew it on town meeting floor to ad allow additional time for application for grant funding from CPC, permitting through CONCOM, additional public forums and outreach to youth sports organizations in the broader community, precise bids from contractors, development of a management partnership agreement with Parks and Rec, and calculation of a tax impact based on the average house value. All of those steps have now been successfully completed. We've had a series of public forums with another one tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock at the high school and the library. CPC has approved a grant of $1.7 million to fund this project, cutting the project cost in half, and we're working to further reduce that through sponsorships and community donations. CONCOM has approved all of the permitting. The school committee and Parks and Rec have a de detailed and comprehensive management agreement for joint oversight and use of the field. The bid process has been completed and awarded contingent upon approval at town meeting. Outreach to other groups, including the chamber and the town health agent, have been on ongoing. Capital Improvements has approved the article and it's, the review is currently underway by appropriations. As you know, the town of Hawkington is governed by a charter, which identifies town meeting as a legislative branch of the town open to all registered voters. The charter preserves the right of any town board to submit warrant articles to be deliberated and decided upon by the voters. The school committee has exercised its rights granted bo both by the charter and mass general laws to bring this project forward to the town for consideration. If the project will be funded as a debt exclusion, the additional step of a vote at the ballot is required for funding to be secured. Discussion at your last meeting suggested a forthcoming unilateral decision by the Board of Selectmen not to allow that to go forward. That decision would be in direct conflict with the spirit of the Charter and an overreach into the purview and authority of the School Committee. And this would be the second time that you have done that. This project is not 
not simply a school project. This is a community project located at the schools. It's been developed by a committee with representation from the Board of Selectmen, Parks and Rec, Appropriations, Capital Improvements, and Community Membership, as well as the schools. As you've heard over the last several days, this is a project that residents want the opportunity to vote on, and it's their absolute right to do so. I've asked our athletic director to come to explain to you the current constraints to student athletes caused by the lack of turf fields and complicated by the vagaries of New England weather. I've asked Parks and Rec to speak to you regarding the impact to their programming of the current situation where they serve as a backup to the schools, as well as the opportunities that the turf fields offer to the town in terms of revenue, um, not just for <coughs> Parks and Rec, but also for downtown businesses. Similarly, you, you will hear from the, um, excuse me, the boards of several youth organizations regarding the importance of, of this project to the children that they serve. And while we all wear different hats, we all have the same message to you. Please let the voters exercise their democratic right to vote on this project. Thank you. Hello. Um, as Jean said, my name is Dee King, and I am the athletic director here in Hockington. Um, let me start by saying that it's a true honor to work in this town. Uh, and like many of us, I take great pride in our schools and particularly in our athletic programs. My goal is for our student athletes, teams, and community to be cutting edge as we create the same opportunities that other towns provide to their respective schools and communities. I'm here to share with you a little bit about the adverse effects that our athletic programs are enduring due to the fact that we are only one of three towns in the Tri-Valley League, the others being Millis and Norton, who do not have a turf field. The student athletes of other Tri-Valley League towns have been on their field since the start of spring sports, which was March 20th. We still haven't even practiced on a field. We have been told that we most likely won't play a game on our high school fields until May. Other towns are not forced to cancel games for rain or inclement weather, thus allowing them to balance their athletic schedules so that their student athletes are not forced to play five games in six days just to successfully complete a season and not risk forfeit. In other towns, there's continuity between the, between the playing surface at the youth level and the surface at the high school. Our student athletes here in Hopkinton grow up utilizing Fruit Street, but then get to the high school and play field hockey, soccer, football, baseball, softball, and lacrosse on grass if conditions are great, or on a gym floor if weather is less than ideal, which it often is. Additionally, our student athletes in Hopkinton are not adequately prepared to play on turf as they don't practice on it, and this serves as a disadvantage to them as they engage in competition at the high school level, but then also to those who look to participate at the collegiate level as well. In Hopkinton, the high number of participants that we have in athletics combined with the total number of teams we have exceed the field space available. We are limited by daylight and weather conditions. Coaches and teams are taking time from Fruit Street and paying for it, thus taking away the ability of Parks and Rec and youth soccer to seek out private rentals, which would create more revenue. As you can imagine, this has a direct impact on the school's operating budget and many teams are also asking parents to donate money to fundraising accounts just so that their program can rent a facility to have a practice. In neighboring towns, the athletic teams have the luxury of competing right on their own campus. The convenient location of their playing surfaces allows students to walk 100 yards to practice and to play games. <coughs> this availability and accessibility of a playing surface instills a sense of school pride within the student body and also, also easily allows an athletic trainer to be present for all practices and games. In Hopkinton, student athletes and parents are expected to drive from Hopkinton High School to Fruit Street, which can take 20 to 25 minutes at school release time, if you've ever done it. The high volume of student drivers trekking to Fruit Street, combined with the expectation that parents should pick up their sons and daughters in the middle of the day, drive them to practice that's all the way across town, and then come back to pick them up has become a burden and could also be considered a safety liability. Additionally, our students are at risk from the safety perspective due to the fact that our one athletic trainer is not able to cover all practices and games at so many different locations. The town of Hopkinton and its school system are state of the art on most levels. Why are we willing to compromise athletics? Hopkinton is not leading the charge in this area, and I would think that many believe athletics to be a co-curricular
extracurricular program that is integral to students, our school, and our community. For all, all of the aforementioned reasons, and many more, I urge that you vote that this project be put on the ballot. If you do not personally support it, that is certainly your prerogative, but please allow the town to exercise its democratic right to be heard through the town meeting and the election process. Thank you. I'll be a lot quicker. I didn't prepare anything. I'm Dan Terry, I'm chairman of the I'm Dan Terry, I'm chairman of the Parks and Rec Commission, and um, it's, it's been, uh, with regards to the fields, I can tell you that it's been a pleasure to um, help the schools use the Fruit Street fields and do that, but it has not been without an impact on our other youth programs. Um, I know Amy Nick from Hopkins Youth Soccer is here to speak about how many families are, are, are using the fields at Fruit Street and, and how the, um, the, the school's use of those fields have, has created uh, a situation where they've had to compromise. I think there, are, I know that there are other youth groups as well that have had to compromise in order to accommodate the schools um, that <coughs> being on there. And, and, and um, we're very fortunate that these groups are, are willing to make these compromises. Um, I, I, I know that they've got other great points. Gene and Dee had excellent points. I agree with all of them. Parks and Rec Commission supports this. We feel like it is a community asset. Um, and I just encourage you to, to put the, to allow the town to vote on this um, at, at both the election and on the ballot. Um, I, I would like to mention, I know we as the board have received many, many emails in the last week over the issue of the turf fields and the ballot. And I, I think the clarification needs to be made because there is a, is misunderstanding. I had misunderstanding as well. Um, this was clarified for me by the town manager as to what would be voted on the ballot. And my understanding of what would be voted on the ballot is not an up or down vote for or against the turf fields. What would be voted on the ballot is how we as a town pay for it, whether it be paid for as a debt exclusion, which means it's outside of the regular constraints of our Proposition 2 and a half levy, or whether it is paid for within our existing levy limit. But the vote on the ballot is not whether the turf fields go or don't go. That is going to be voted at town meeting by the town, and the vote on the ballot would be how it is paid, debt exclusion versus within the regular levy, levy limit. Have I stated that correctly, Mr. Kamalo? Y yes, you have. Okay. So, so yeah, to clarify, there's been an uproar that the Board of Selectmen <coughs> is trying to stop the turf fields by not putting it on the, on the ballot. And that has nothing to do with it. It really just comes down to what, how we're going to pay for it. Is it going to be a debt exclusion, or is it, are we going to keep it under the levy limit? So if the if the if the town decides at town meeting that this is something that they want to do and they want to pay for, well, it can, if it can fit within in, within the levy limit, it's it's done as a one stop shop. But if, if people if it's if it goes on the uh, if it uh, if it's on the ballot as a as a debt exclusion. That's just a whole other step. So, so may, may I ask a, a, a question then? Because I, I know that, that a lot of people have been asking me about this and, and, and because there was a rumor about that. So does that mean that um, there is room to pay for this under, uh, the, the, under the levy capacity? So, or not? Based on the F, F, on the proposed FY19 budget, yes, the town's excess levy is approximately 1.4 million dollars. The annual debt service for this project will not exceed 400 thousand dollars. Okay, so there is room under the levy. Yes, thank you, thank you. Mr. Quite Chair. Advisable. Point of order: I would encourage us to get through public comment as best mm -hmm. we can. We've yeah. got guests here yeah. that have other commitments, and then when we take this issue up later on, we can debate and deliberate further. 
Good evening. My name is Amy Mick. I'm a resident of 11 Smith Road. I am also the president of Hopkins Youth Soccer and a JV girls lacrosse coach at the high school. I'm not going to take much of your time, particularly after your comments. I'd just like to make clear the magnitude of use that gets used over at Fruit Street and the implications when we try to accommodate the high school that affects my program and the other youth programs. Hopkins Youth Soccer in the fall has over 90 teams and over 900 children. So we cannot get all of our kids on Hopkinton fields. We currently pay over $15,000 a year to move them to fields outside of town fields because we don't have any other options. Um, we utilize Fruit Street for a lot of it, but it's just not enough. And when the high school needs to come over and use space, we do what we can to accommodate them. But just the other night, I've had people talking about we had youth soccer, we had youth lacrosse, and we had a high school lacrosse game. The lacrosse game ran late. All of a sudden, we have to adjust people and move them to fields that we don't have the space for. I think having a turf facility at the high school would be so helpful for the high school, for the youth programs, and also a way to generate some revenue. Um, I do share concerns about driving our kids over to Fruit Street. For working two working parents, it's virtually impossible to pick your kid up at the high school at 2 o'clock and get them to a 2.30 practice. As a parent of a 10th grader, I don't love the fact that she sometimes has to get a ride across town at one of the busiest times of day um, by a junior operator who's barely got their license. So the challenges are big. The number of kids we're trying to accommodate is enormous, and I think the turf project would help us accommodate more of those programs. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Mahone. I'm the president of Hopkins and Little League. I live at 20 Grove Street. Um, I'll be even more brief than Amy. Um, we are one of those youth groups that will benefit uh, uh, tangentially to this program. We won't be one of the primary consumers uh, by any stretch, but it would be great for our program of over 700 kids um, to be able to get out on the fields uh, in seasons like this where we haven't been able to get on the grass fields uh, for the last two weeks. It would be spectacular to have this kind of accessibility, or this access to this kind of a project. Um, in addition, uh, we run a big tournament in the summer, uh, the Sizzler Tournament. We have over 400 kids from outside of Hopkinton attend uh, those tournaments, uh, those tournament games. Um, I, I think it brings in, uh, probably brings in a fair amount of revenue to town. I think it would be a, a nice, uh, nice uh, tool to uh, be able to uh, show off the town a little bit um, if we had that kind of facility available for that tournament. Um, I think it would be a great addition. Um, so I strongly support this uh, project and we would love to see it uh, come to a vote. Thank you very much. to ask anybody else okay thank you everybody everybody for your, for your comments uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit uh, this, if, if you guys can just hold hold tight for a few more minutes I really want to really want to bring up um, our esteemed visitors did we have a legislative delegation visit the uh, board of selectmen here, a legislative update from the office of Canada, uh, Governor, Senator Karen Spelka and Representative Carolyn Dyke on budgetary and other legislative issues. Yeah, but we're happy really? to, to wait just, for the police department. Absolutely. Okay. Wait. Yeah. We don't want to. Okay, that. I, I think I, we don't get you guys to visit often. I want to make sure we take care of you so you come to visit. They're not going anywhere. There's only a okay. couple of crimes <laughs> taking place out there. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I just, okay. We, that, that was what our discussion was about. Thank you. Okay, all right then. Um, in that case, police officer, police officer appointment. The Board of Selectmen will consider the appointment of Derek J. Morton to the position of police officer in the town of Hopkinton. Chief, come on up. Don't be shy. <laughs> Well, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce you to Derek J. Morton for your consideration for appointment for the position of police officer. Derek is a replacement officer for an officer that left us to go to Franklin. We just took someone from Sherborne, lost one to Franklin, 
Now we're getting Derek from Sutton. I feel like uh, Bill Belichick and free agency. <laughs> But uh, Derek has over a year and a half of police experience with the Sutton Police Department, served eight years in the Army National Guard as a military police officer. He has a background in substance abuse treatment. He was a director for a Spectrum Health for one of their programs. Uh, that really came out in one of his, his interview when he talked about you know, his passion working with people with addiction problems. and. Uh, that's one thing we're definitely looking for in police officers, someone that has a little empathy and understanding for people. And that certainly helped him in uh, obtaining this job. Um, another thing I'd like to mention, doing his background, we learned he received uh, multiple commendations from the Sutton Police Department in his short career there. And uh, we think he's going to be an excellent addition to the department. Derek? Thank you, Chief. Oh, come in. Thank you. As the Chief mentioned, uh, I served uh, several years in the uh, military as a military police officer, um, and then also worked uh, about six years in human services, uh, starting out in the mental health field, and then eventually being a program director working with substance abuse. Um, was able to, through all that uh, work experience and training, finally able to put myself through the academy um, and become a police officer where I served the last year and a half in Sutton, and uh, now great to be uh, here in Hopkinton. The process to select our police officers is always very rigorous, and I know the chief uh, and his colleagues do an excellent job with this process, so I'm very comfortable with, uh, with him coming on board, and I'm Thank excited you. to have you in town, and uh, I think it's going to be a great addition to the department, and welcome. We're, Thank we're, you. We're, we're lucky to have you. I appreciate you. it. Uh, yeah, I'll just echo the words of Mr. Herr. Um, you know, we want to welcome you aboard. Um, chief has brought on some uh, excellent recruits and uh, people with experience as well over the last few years and uh, we're looking forward to having you around. Thank you. Ms. Wright. Well, welcome, Derek. We hope you'll be happy here. Um, we're very pleased to have you join the force and you have some excellent credentials and we know that Chief Lee has a good eye. Um, he, he makes some good choices for us and uh, I, I must say, in hearing your credentials, I am both pleased and sorry at the same time that some of those excellent credentials on substance abuse unfortunately are something that we are needing more and more in our community. Um, I'm pleased that you have them. I'm sorry that we have to say that, but we all know uh, the challenges that communities are having everywhere. It's always interesting to read the police log and uh, you know, we get a good laugh out of the squirrels in the basement and the, and the possums in the pantry, but unfortunately too many of them nowadays are, are pertaining to substance abuse. Um, so we're really glad to have you and particularly glad to have your, your experience in, in this uh, very important area. Welcome to Hopkins. Thank you very much. Yeah, so to echo everybody else's sentiments, uh, I feel the same way. Um, it's nice to see some of these new guys coming on that you're relatively new as a police officer. Bad part is when we have some of the older ones, the ones that have been here for a long time. And you're replaced kind of a, the ebb and flow. So to see Phil Powers out there was probably gave me the only ticket I've ever got. And I'm gonna knowing that he's, <laughs> he's gonna, well, so far, I guess I'll have to learn that. <laughs> um, um, you know, to know that he's going to be sitting on that seat pretty soon, and, and we're going to say goodbye to him and have bringing someone else in. It's a, it's a, it's nice to see that the chief's doing such a good job bringing in such qualified uh, candidates. And uh, you know, welcome to Hopkinton. You, you made the varsity team. You got rid of the JV Sutton squad. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome, Derek. Officer Morton. Welcome. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm just glad that somebody that he didn't go to school with that was bringing you know, <laughs> I mean, the people here I went to school with, their fathers. Okay, well, I mean, it's true, true. <laughs> yeah, but uh, really, can, uh, thank you very much. Congratulations for, for, uh, for getting through the gauntlet. And actually, it's just beginning. I mean, we, we, you're going to be riding with somebody, too, for a while, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it? so uh, oh, yeah. even though he has experience as a police officer, he has to go through the uh, FDO field training program for Hopkinton PD. Yeah, because, you know, just like we're saying, as much as we, we love Officer Phil, but this is, you know, we, we still want uh, the uh, the community policing with the uh, 
you know, the SRO is in this town. It's just, it's so important. Again, with you, with your background and, and opioids and everything else, it's just going to be great to have you in town. So really, thank you very much for coming. Chief, congratulations on getting on that great hire. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Mr. Chair, I move the Board of Selectmen appoint Derek Morton to the position of police officer for the town of Hopkinton. Second. Any further discussion? Any none? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Welcome. Thank, thank you, so you much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Consider approving uh, $100 advance fund gift from David Norman L. McMillan of 108 Main Street, Hopkins, Mass., and a parade permit. Board of Selectmen consider approve a parade permit for uh, Amanda Robichaud for the Secretary of the Hopkins Middle League for the Open Day <coughs> Parade on Sunday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. There is no rain date for this event. And then fourth, a special temporary alcohol license again for the Hopkins Middle League. That's always a fun one. At, uh, Licensed wine and beer only. Fundraising will be held on Friday, March 18th at St. John's Evangelist at the Hall. Marty's some stop line brewery will provide. Okay, and they want to break. Oh, no, sorry, election, election worker uh, appointments. Board of Selectmen will consider approving the list of election workers. I'll break out number two. I wanted to break out two as well, and also a question on for the alcohol license with that. Uh, Okay, so uh, one, three, and five. Joe, it's a motion to approve one, three, and so one moved. Time. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in oh, favor? Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. I, I don't have my glasses on. Is three, the three is the parade, parade permit for the Little League? Yes. I'm sorry. I would like to discuss that. Okay. My so apologies. One, two, two, and five. Then we can take so the Secretary of the uh, Okay. No, he wanted to break out too. Okay, so one minute. <laughs> I move one. one. Five. I move one. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, all those in favor? One, one in five. Okay, one in five. So all those moved. in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, we're going to do one in five. Okay, two. So, this is kind of a thing that I tend to talk about at each meeting. Um, I'd like to thank Jeff McMillan and, and his wife for making such a generous donation. Um, I love seeing the, the townspeople and people from out of town donate to this fund. It's for a great cause. And uh, it's nice to see, and, you know, sad, sad when you see an obituary in there of some you know, but it's nice to see when they say donations too, and people step up and donate to this. So thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Norma. Mr. Chair, I move two on the consent agenda. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed and abstentions? That's okay. Number three, Ms. Wright. Yes. Um, I mean, what's not to love about the Little League? We love the Little League. This is a fun event. Um, so, I, you know, it's not that I have a concern about the Little League itself. Um, I did have a discussion a bit with Ms. Robichaud about the timing, and I'm hoping that another year that might be considered that holding it within that 10, 11 o'clock hour is, is the hour that many of our, particularly our Protestant churches, have their worship services, and, and I, I still am concerned about Sundays being sacred. So I, I am hoping that another year that might be adjusted a bit. But um, today, as I was looking over the materials that came from it, and I noticed that there are road closures called for around the common at 11, and um, I was aware, because I live right in the downtown, that our Korean Presbyterian Church, which is a major presence on the town common, um, a major worship house of worship, um, is holding their services all within that hour, and much of the parking is taken by them. And um, I don't know, is there anyone representing the Korean church here today? Ah, there is. Um, this gentleman, I, I believe this must be Pastor Kim, am I correct? Um, I spoke with Pastor Kim earlier today and, and asked if he had been at all consulted 
about the road closures and was quite surprised and, and I guess I would say a little embarrassed on the part of our town that no one had contacted the pastor about the impact of closing off this area um, during peak service hours. Um, so I don't know if Pastor Kim wants to comment at all, but I, I would like to see if there's a way we can, whether it's with the police and detouring, um, accommodate this, because I am concerned that um, a group of 700 people and a road closure in the middle of the of the church's services, um, you know, just just might create some problems. So I know the pastor's here. Uh, he he might be better to better speak to how this impacts the congregation. What we might do. Well, Miss Wright, um, I've been uh, privy to this parade for a long time, mm -hmm. and I know that the uh, the road closure. So I, I think 700 is probably, that probably includes all the spectators as well as uh, maybe some of their families that aren't gonna be there. 700 is, mm -hmm. I think, a high number based mm -hmm. on last year's. Mm -hmm. And I think that the amount of time that the Main Street is closed is to get to that particular venue, the, the, pre, the Korean Presbyterian Church, is probably less than 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, based on last year. So, you know, yes, Main Street itself will be closed for that 15 minutes or so while they come up, but you can always come across Fenton, you know that area as well as anybody, and, and um, you know, the, the people are, are going two-way traffic right, right up until the parade starts, where they could come in and take a left under, under the Korean church, as well as once it goes by, um, for those 10 or 15 minutes. But I understand your point that they mm. haven't been contacted. So I, I'm I not all that familiar with uh, with how it runs, but it just caught my eye immediately yep. that this is right smack at the time yep. that they're holding their So services. they all congregate on the common, do their pictures, run around, do their thing. Why don't you speak to the pastor, because okay. he's the one that's so, concerned. So they all kind of, I don't know if you're familiar with the parade or not, but they've, you know, historically, they all kind of congregate and kids do their thing, get their pictures taken. Mm -hmm. They don't close the road until they're, you know, they assemble on the common and then they close the road for the 10 minutes it takes to walk by. As soon as you're, as soon as that last marcher is past Hayden Row, that's open again. So it's only a matter of 10 or 15 minutes historically. And now, I don't know, I, I'm not involved with the Little League other than having two kids as participants. And maybe the enrollment is much higher this year than, than say last year. But last year was the first time I'd been there probably in the last seven or eight years, and it was probably a 10 or 15 minute amount of time that that road would be closed. And that may impact you greatly, I don't know, but I'm just simply painting a picture. Um, yeah, I'm currently youth pastor and also associate pastor, and senior pastor is absent for the mission in Haiti. Um, our main service is 11 o'clock, and people come to church uh, right before or some congregation members like five minutes late or so. <laughs> Um, the best solution, probably, I thought about that, and uh, it prayed. Pa I mean, starts at eleven thirty a.m. Could give us great um, access um, to park and then getting into the uh, worship sanctuary. Or um, I'm not really sure. You can uh, how many, how much time you need to prepare and gathering. Um, for the parade, if you can start 11.30 a.m. I'm not really sure which one is better, but um, could you consider um, kind of a time um, change? Is there anyone here representing the applicant? Yeah. Oh, great, thanks, go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy to. <laughs> I'm hoping we can, maybe uh, next year this will get worked sure. out ahead of time so we're not <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, I'm happy to have a conversation. Um, yeah. Honestly, the issue had never been raised before. Um, we've been doing this, we've been doing this parade as long as I've been involved. You know, this is my seventh year. Uh, Brendan's been involved for way longer than that, uh, we're at least seen it. Um, so I'm happy to discuss, you know, options that'll, that'll fix the problem for you guys. Was it, and I don't want to get it, I don't think this is the place for a full-on discussion, but you know, if there were issues last year, I'm happy to re resolve them. So, shouldn't be too big a shouldn't be too big a problem to fix. Okay, so I would suggest that maybe 
because Pastor Kim would at least like to be able to notify his congregants maybe this Sunday morning so they're aware of some mm -hmm. alterations. Perhaps uh, coordination with the police. I, I read something about detours or whatever. There, there's certainly a way around, you know, going up around the side streets and coming back mm -hmm. through so there'd be some notification. Um, so if I could, truthfully, I think it's going to take more time to set up the detours than it would to just close the street for, as he said, 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it would probably be counterproductive. We, I'm sure we could sort out a way to, to make it work that's minimally invasive for everybody. Could you guys do it at 1030 this coming two weeks? I, it might be a little late to sort that out, um, but uh, we, could, we could try to. It's easier for us to, at this point probably to bump it like you know, 10 or 15 minutes later. No, um, I think really moving it early, we run into church issues and that kind of thing. So how about how about eleven thirty then? Yeah, we could probably make that work. Okay. Okay, Mr. Okay. Chair, I move that the board of selectmen <laughs> approve the parade permit permit as submitted by Amanda Robichaud for the Huffington Little League for the opening day parade to be held on Sunday, April twenty second, at eleven thirty a.m. Second. Any further discussion? Good for you. Um, we'll make that work. Mr. Kamala, does the good. application have to be changed? for us to approve it at a different time. Um, and is there any consideration with public safety and getting their response and, and opinion on a change in time or anything like that? I think based on the, if the adjustment is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I think you can approve the application as submitted. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for thank your thank you. base. Thanks for the compromise. And, and I would hope that maybe next year yeah. work this out so that sure. we find a time. Sure. Like I said, <coughs> we've done it historically and nobody's ever said anything. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm happy to, happy to accommodate this. when we can. Good. This is this is also, and, and this isn't meant strictly toward Little League, but this is also why the application is supposed to be submitted at least 30 days in advance so that these things can be worked right. out. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, he's the. Is he the alcohol license too? Because he just left. Although it actually looks like it was. So. Okay. Number four. The board staff will consider approving special temporary alcohol license for Jason Mahan. If that uh, be had for the Hopkins Little League for temporary yeah. alcohol license. Wines and malts only at uh, Friday, May 18th at St. John's Evangelist Parish Hall, 7 to 11 p.m. Okay. Who pulled this one? I, I did. There were questions on the. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Jason, come on up. Yeah. We did right. again. <laughs> I guess I'm no Can you change this time too? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. My only question, based on the comments that came back from our permitting team, uh, the police department had uh, requested that there be a detail officer for this number of people. Has that been arranged? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Check. we worked with Officer Porter, I believe, on that. Excellent. And um, at the time we got our materials from Maria, the uh, floor plan, the fire department had said they couldn't, they couldn't read it, so they couldn't respond. Did you get them a better yep. copy? Yeah, they're all set. It's hard. They're, they're clear, ready to go. Okay. Police is happy. Fireman's happy. I'm happy. Just checking off the boxes. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just glad that it's not in uh, Milford this year. I've got to have it in Hopkins. Oh. So we've had it in Milford oh. before. Okay. Thank keep you. it local. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I would like to move to approve the um, fundraising permit as submitted. Okay, here it is. Special, special temporary license. Yes, okay. That, 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 that's written? That's written. Excellent. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstention? Motion passes. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, Board of will consider approving the list of election workers. Oh, we did that, didn't we? Oh, we already oh, we did that. Yeah, oh, that was yeah. consent. Yeah. All right, then, let's just come on up, please. Senator Stoker, thank you very much. And Representative Dykema. Well, I know Hello. how you ordered that they want to do it. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Thank how are you? Good to see you all. Good to see you. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for coming. This is always a, this is always a treat for us. So, please. If, if I could, Mr. Chairman, yes. um, you know the protocol where House members generally follow Senate members, and we certainly always defer to our Senate colleagues to go first. But I did just want to uh, recognize our Senator Karen Spilka. As many of you know, 
she um, is the impending Senate President for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is very exciting, uh, not only for us here in our district that she represents, but also for her family and for the Senate. So I just wanted to publicly congratulate her and acknowledge this exciting new role that she's going to be playing, which will be wonderful for all, for all of us. I just want to thank Carolyn and thank all of you. I feel um, humbled by it, by my colleagues' uh, vote of support. But I also want to thank all of you, uh, the Board of Selectmen, the town administrator, and, and, and the folks that are here, and especially my colleagues in the House, um, in, the, in, in the district and beyond. This is really a team effort. And no one person can do all of this alone. So I thank publicly Carolyn for being a great uh, colleague and friend and team player and the other uh, representatives and, and senators in, in this area. Uh, I feel like over the last few years, we really have put Metro West on the map. Um, and that has been a House and Senate concerted effort, uh, not only in by, you know, both of the branches, but it's been bipartisan, it's been us all working together, and it's been in working with all of you as well. So thank you. Thank you. So who so, I'm starting? So, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the budget, and, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it, um, where we are for this year, and then a little bit set up for next year. Um, and it's good news, and I knock on wood because I am superstitious, and last year at this time, our revenues sort of went literally at, at this angle going down. Um, we were good last year until March, and then our revenues really took a downward turn. Uh, and then through April, May, and June, it continued to go downward. At this point, for this current fiscal year, fiscal 18, we are almost $900 million above benchmark. This is after, if you remember, the House did a budget in April, the Senate in May, and the first week in June, we realized we had to cut about $830 million from our joint budget. So we had to cut a lot of programs and services that both of the houses had tried to initiate or add to. We did hold harmless uh, unrestricted local aid and Chapter 70, but some of the other areas, even in education, whether it be charter reimbursement or, or other things, uh, did not get the increases that we wanted to, to give. So we are in good shape. We, um, as I said, are 900 million above benchmark uh, by the end of March. Some of that we anticipate to, to um, go a little bit lower. For example, in December, a lot of people filed their taxes that would have filed in April, but they filed in December to take advantage of some of the federal uh, tax credits. So we anticipate April will be a month that is usually not as, as good as it, as it usually is. But still, uh, you know, my feeling is even if we're 300 to 500 million above benchmark, it's a lot better than it was the last two years. And so we are looking at next year and hoping to add for, for next year. Um, we did a, uh, the House did a supplemental budget for this year, and, and I'll let Carolyn talk um, about the House's version. I know that in working a little bit with the House Chair of Ways and Means, we talked about adding some things that would help our communities for this year. For example, a special education circuit breaker. Um, it came out, we thought last year when we were funding it, we thought it was going to be at the 72% reimbursement rate. And it turned out that when the state looked at all the numbers, the numbers came in a lot higher. So it's actually at 68. So we will be increasing that. So Hopkinton will get some funds um, in addition to what it got. And there may be other areas. So that's good news. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at for, for next year, um, the House is coming out with the budget tomorrow, I think. Um, and then the Senate will do, will do our budget in May and, and again look to a conference committee budget in, um, in, uh, in June. Um, there are other bills that we've been doing, uh, the DCAM bond bill um, that we were able to, to get to a $2 million authorization to help for the town hall. 
um, that if that's something that, that the town uh, wants to access, we can be, Carolyn and I can be working with all of you to try to get that released over time to, to help the town fund um, the town hall renovations. Um, and as the budget goes through, we can be talking to you about other things that are important to the town. But there will be like an environmental bond bill coming up. So, so we, you know, we try to keep in mind what are some of the real needs for the town so that when we have the opportunities, we can insert them into the bills and hopefully uh, help the town out with some more funding. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now and turn it over. If I can beg your indulgence for one second, we just have to open up a public hearing for a second. Sure. The chair will entertain a motion to open a public hearing, amendment to the Pharma Series Pouring Permit License and Entertainment License for Start Line Brewing Company, uh, 151 R. Hayden Road. So moved. All those in favor? Um, Aye. And I would like to, uh, to uh, hold off on the hearing for a few minutes to continue doing this. Okay, I beg everybody's indulgence. Obviously, we're just running a little bit late because of the beginning of this meeting, but we'll get we'll try and get back on track. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, um, and thank you, Senator. And I'll just add a few other things, and then certainly leave time for questions at the end. Um, as as the senator said, our House budget initial budget is going to come out tomorrow. All uh, monetary um, bills start in the House, so we will be kind of the first step in the process, which will culminate, as you know, in July. Um, so uh, just to highlight a few, a few things, um, the revenues that, that the center had mentioned, you know, it's always a challenge to work on projected revenues, which is what we always um, have to work with, you know, sort of based on, on past estimates and past realities to try and figure out where we are. And luckily, we're going to be hopefully in much better shape this year. Um, than we have in the past, and I will say that this year, you know, we were all pleased that we didn't, we avoided nine C cuts, which were the unfortunate local results of some of the, the budgeting challenges we had last year. Um, just in, in responding to local needs, I know one of the concerns that we heard uh, directly from a lot of our towns on was um, challenges with respect to circuit breaker and the special ed circuit breaker fund, which had, um, because of some of these projections that weren't accurate, um, there was actually a shortfall in the circuit breaker, which usually is, is funded at about a reimbursement of about 73 to 74%. Um, based on the figure that was appropriated, it was down in the high 60s. So um, after a lot of advocacy uh, on behalf of the towns, we, I'm really pleased that in the House we um, voted on a supplemental budget, which included an additional $12 million for circuit breaker to make sure the towns would be brought up to, again, about the 72 73% reimbursement rate, which we know is incredibly um, important to the communities. And uh, on a follow-on to what the Senator said, when we come into the budget process, obviously, um, when it comes to advocating for um, budget line items that are important, we always keep the local needs first, which would be the Chapter 70 funds for public education, as well as the circuit breaker reimbursement funds. Uh, in addition to the unrestricted general government aid, all three of which we know kind of are, are the, the meat and potatoes of, of the funds that come into the town from the state, we'll be sure to be doing that as well. Um, the other thing, I know um, Hoppington is very uh, veteran friendly and veteran supportive community. I thought I wanted to note that in the supplemental budget, um, the, there was additional uh, $5 million put in there to ensure that all of our veterans receiving 115 benefits are held whole. Um, and there was a shortfall in that, which was, was supplemented with this appropriation, which is uh, appropriate and certainly something we all want to do. I serve as the vice chair of the Committee on Transportation, and so I spend a lot of my time um, working on transportation issues in, a, in addition to being uh, the House chair of our legislative caucus, which is a House and Senate caucus where we work on Metro West issues specifically together as a group and advocate. And um, one of the things we've been focusing on is commuter rail. I don't know how many of, of you may have heard from um, local residents about commuter rail challenges that we've faced over the last number of years. We have a new general manager, which creates a real opportunity for us to improve service. And um, the uh, state has also just commissioned a vision study for the commuter rail, which is long overdue, where we can start looking at 
uh, really creating a long-term map for improving our commuter rail service, both the frequency and the reliability of that service for those folks who commute into Boston, uh, and also <coughs> hopefully relieving some of the congestion on the Mass Pike, which we also hear about a lot. And we're advocating as a local caucus for getting legislative representation actively in that visioning group so that we can represent the interests of our districts uh, in that conversation. Also, also worth noting, uh, we know transportation challenges, especially coming out of a very um, difficult winter. There are a lot of potholes out there which kind of underscore the need for the transportation funding that we in the legislature appropriate. Uh, traditionally, about a two to three hundred uh, million dollar bond authorization to reimburse cities and towns for um, road repairs called the Chapter 90 funding. So we just passed last week in the House, and I think did the Senate do it yet? Is it pending in the Senate? We're, we're doing it tomorrow, and I think we may do a multi-year bill. I think it's coming right out of bonding as a multi-year bill. To provide the reimbursement for, for cities and towns to use that to do the local road repair. Um, I also wanted to mention, I know rail trails, uh, Hopkinton is a big supporter of rail trails, and I wanted to note that in the environmental bond bill, which was released by the governor, which is still pending, um, action by the legislature. There's a significant component for local rail trails, and we can certainly follow up with the town, provide more information if there is a desire on the part of the town to uh, avail itself of some of that, those resources. That would be um, great and great to work on. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Officer Morton on uh, coming to Hopkinton and just underscore uh, the importance as Ms. Wright mentioned of his uh, behavioral health experience. And unfortunately, as was said, that's something that we deal with at all levels, levels of government, uh, local, state, and federal. Uh, it really is a crisis and is also something we'll be paying careful attention to in the budget to make sure that our communities have the funding to uh, hopefully at least um, stay ahead and provide some of the interventions that are necessary there. So thank you. Wonderful to be here, as always, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you. I do just want to add that we were able to uh, obtain $100,000 for the Hopkinton Organizing for Prevention efforts right here in Hopkinton as a community organization to help combat the opioid addiction and, and substance abuse. So um, that's something that we can look into for, for next year as well. Because the community programs are so important. Yeah. Yeah. They really are the front line. Thank you. You start. Uh, two quick thoughts. One, uh, you know, there's a lot goes on in the world of politics these days at the local, state, and federal level, mostly at the federal level, and it, it makes us all scratch our head a little bit. Uh, I can't be prouder of the two people that represent us in Beacon Hill. Uh, you guys are class acts. You know what you're doing, and you conduct yourselves extremely well at all times. So thank you for representing Hoppington so well. Thank you. Uh, two, uh, and more on the financial side, uh, you mentioned revenues up 500 million, 600 million, maybe it was 900 million actually uh, this year over last year, over projection anyway. And so that would suggest to me that the budget that we just built, that we're taking a town meeting in a couple of weeks, is pretty safe with the state revenue numbers that we modeled against. Is that a fair statement? Was it based on the governor's numbers? Yes. Or? yes it yeah, is. I would say that would, should be safe. And is and it I possible that those numbers could go up? Yes. Is there a percentage anyone's talking about no. yet? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> about a dollar amount. <laughs> All right, I'm good. Thank yeah, you. I mean, I, I think that, that um, you know, the House and Senate, and, I, and I'm speaking from the Senate, that we add to the governor's Chapter 70 numbers generally, at least the last few years. Um, we've usually increased the charter reimbursement, the special education numbers, because the governor's numbers for this year were at 68% reimbursement for the sped circuit breaker. I know the House and Senate tries harder uh, to be a little bit higher. So, so we do you know, adjust things, but um, I know libraries uh, usually are, are something that we try to increase. Public libraries are really important. I mean, Hopkinton has done such a beautiful job with their new library, and it's really being utilized a lot. Uh, so, you know, we'll take a look, but I, I, as, as long as the numbers stay above benchmark, I think um, that you will see some increase. And Mr. Kamal, we have not built any of that into our model to date, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. I would also like to echo what Mr. Hurst said as far as 
you guys are wonderful. Um, I've been to dozens of events with uh, Ms. Dykema, and she's always been very professional, always listening. Uh, generally, after those events, I send her a bunch of emails saying, I don't really even know what we were talking about there. Can you clarify? And she takes plenty of time to, uh, to, to help me out. Same thing when I email your office, either you or Mr. Giambetti, get back to us, get back to me rather quickly. And for someone that's, uh, I will say, new into politics, I will not say a new politician, because I'm not a politician, but I'm new into politics. Oh, you're a politician. Oh, I am not a politician. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> listen, here, listen, stay in that one. Dude, turn to talk. Dude, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would like to thank you for your, uh, how available you guys are for questions. Uh, I'm sure they're very mundane and, and low-level questions for me. I'd like to thank you guys for taking the, uh, the amount of time and effort that you do to answer my questions, and uh, it's much appreciated. Anytime. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, everyone has said it very well. Thank you for always keeping Hopkinton right up there in your considerations, and uh, particularly this year for the, the funding you just spoke of with our education and our circuit breaker. You know this has been a particularly difficult and painful uh, budget year for us, and of course the education costs are uh, are one of the key budget drivers, so that, that's just so very important to us. And I just also wanted to mention, um, this may seem like kind of old news, but it really isn't isn't to us it was rather important for us um, thanking you both I know you did play a role in uh, an advocacy role for us in our discussions over the proposed Cascade station here in Hopkinton which was a subject of much angst in this town and we are very grateful that it was resolved um, in the town's favor and I know that you did you did help us with that and uh, wanted to speak out and say we appreciate that Thank that you. was important to us. Congratulations, uh, Senator Spilka. Uh, thank you. Great accomplishment. Um, thank you both for coming here tonight. And I don't have any questions, but echo everything that uh, that my fellow board members have uh, mentioned. And look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thanks. Senator, I'm just glad that you're here because I can stop posting on Facebook. Congratulations, because I can see you as a person. <laughs> Um, really, uh, I, I, and I just really want again um, to pick up on uh, what Ms. Wright was talking about. Without the two of you and, and your office, that with that intimidating office that you have, um, bringing Eversource and, and the DPU people in there when Norman and I were going in to visit, that really helped. And 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 th that gas gate, um, where it's you know some people think it's a small thing, with all the big things that you guys must have on your plate. Um, it really it was something very important to the town. It was it, it frightened a lot of people, and um, and uh, because of the two of you, it uh, it was resolved. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. Um, the other one is the, the rail trail money. Really, that's um, one of the things that when we ran into budget problems, it got <coughs> no. We had it. We had people that uh, came in front of us a, a couple months ago and and uh, brought to light that we don't have a budget at all in our town for taking up trails. It's all done voluntarily. And um, we really have to um, look into that and, and throw, really put some money into it too uh, because the people taking care of it uh, are elderly and uh, we need the help. But so again, thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for coming, thank you for your patience. And, and uh, oh, sure. for, for it was our, fun to uh, watch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could I have uh, uh, one last update, Mr. Chairman? I was remiss, I should have uh, mentioned this earlier, but the town had voted on a senior property tax exemption mm -hmm. that I know that was um, very important. And that required legislation that, that the center and I file in advanced legislation to implement that vote of the voters. And I just wanted to give a quick update on where that stood. So it's House 4258. And we've been in close touch with the town manager's office working with Norman on that. It was reported favorably out of committee, um, which is great news. It, it's now in the committee on third reading. There are a couple of minor things that we were back and forth with the town on to get straightened out before we um, really pushed to move it to the House floor. But we're actively working on that and hoping to get it done soon in the House so we can get it over to the Senate and hopefully uh, move quickly ahead with that. Should be able to. The only other thing that I would like to mention is, is Carolyn talked about the commuter rail. Um, one thing that I'm, I'm really hoping that we can do, some in the supplemental for this year and in the next year's budget, 
is increased funding for our regional transit authorities that, that Hopkinton has the Metro West regional transit that connects it's it's been incredible to watch that blossom over the last 10 years it now connects 15 communities 15 communities that were not connected at all together and not only does it pro provide transportation but it really uh, has weaved the fabric of the lives of the communities together for for businesses for employees for uh, you know seniors being able to get to hospitals from Hopkinton either Metro West Medical Center or Milford that it's really been expanded but there is no really weekend service or evening service and, and other things that um, I think the Metro West RTA is an example of uh, a real jewel in the whole RTA system across the state but it has a lot of uh, needs and I think that Hopkinton and the other Metro West communities would benefit from uh, an infusion and again help people get off the road or for people who cannot afford transportation or cannot drive this really helps in increase their uh, self-sufficiency their pr is le less isolation and just e you know everybody benefits so that's something that I'm hoping that we can focus Focus on over the coming months as well. Thank you. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Very a great rest of the thank evening. You. Great to see you all. Thank Good night, you. Madam President. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's uh, I'd like to reopen the, the uh, public hearing for the uh, Farmer Series Pouring Permit uh, License and Attainment License Start Line Brewing Company. Okay, um, Mr. Twinney, can you oh, come up? Yes. You can all of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm John P. Connell. I'm the lawyer for the applicant, Startline Brewing Company. Uh, to my immediate right is Ted Twinney, the owner. And to my far right, Phil Zara, Phil Lamley. We are here tonight to apply to expand uh, the liquor license pouring permit premise in the property to basically be the entire property with a patio out back. And we're also seeking to expand our closing hour till 10 p.m., seven days a week. Lastly, we're proposing to amend our entertainment license to add six TVs, uh, speakers for recorded music, shuffleboard, and on occasion, live entertainment. And that's the guts of the application. So we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Sure. Mr. Chair, Mr. Nealon, are you here this evening as part of this process or for something else? I'm here as part of this. Representing? You're rep representing Starline as well? Okay, thank you. Just, just want to know. Uh, I have no questions at this time. Oh, that's, wow. That's great. Who's this is Starry? I have no questions. Dead Starry. I can't believe these two don't have any questions. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, we're in the public hearing part. <laughs> I have no questions. Who's right? Well, I guess I, I, I did have some questions, and I can't seem to get to the floor plan here, but um, so just explain to me what is happening with the marketplace. Is that, looked like on the floor plan that I had seen, that's not going away, but, and your ice cream stand out, is this all going to become the pub brewery, or are you still keeping, I mean, that that's a very successful <laughs> beloved piece of of water fresh farm can you kind of explain how those two work together and I know or this don't is a great question thank you happy to give you some clarity on that uh, and thank you for all your time tonight um, uh, Phil is our landlord so he can speak to that but um, I will pass the mic if you don't mind to him to speak about the marketplace okay thank you yes yeah, so the marketplace will continue to operate it will mm -hmm. be just a bit condensed from what it is today so we did condense the marketplace about two years ago when Starline began their operations within Water Fresh Farm. And we were able to do that with actually not cutting any items at all. I think this go around will probably end up cutting some items that are currently uh, in the marketplace, those that are either slow movers or not moving at all. Mm -hmm. So the, the selection will be condensed a bit. 
Um, but there will be a, a fairly robust artesian selection that we're continuing to provide to the consumers that come to the store. So your upstairs area, that will stay the same? That was like a That's sort correct. Of That's primarily area. office space for, for the business. Okay. There's no public access to that space upstairs. So again, I, I'm not able to pull up like, the floor plan right now, but when mm -hmm. one walks in, is one able, if you're not interested in you, the pub aspect of it, are you still able to go into the marketplace with your kids or whatever and get sandwiches and or are you walking? Yeah, Thank so, you. Yeah. so as you enter the, the yeah. facility, to the left will be the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And primarily straight ahead and to the right and in the back will be dedicated to uh, to the brewery operation. Mm -hmm. so ice cream stand going away? So the ice cream stand is going to evolve and, and it's going to be brought indoors. So, okay. And so this will be yeah, and, and I don't mean to hog the time, but and this is more of putting my old planning board hat on, so it's probably not really even my business, but I remember being on the planning board at the time that the general site was approved and there was another section of parking not to be built but could be built if it was needed. Um, how does this expansion fit with your current parking? Are you adequate? Do you need to use that extra area or? Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to stay within the current envelope that was presented to the planning board years ago. Right. Uh, there'll be some employee and green spaces added to what you mentioned to. Mm -hmm. I think the only until added spots is 20 some yeah, extra spots. I think it's 24 additional spots. Right. 24 additional within the existing area? Correct. Okay, so even though even though there's a whole separate area, you didn't fully build out That's the correct. existing. That's correct. Okay. There was a lot, if I remember. Right. No, I, re I yeah. remember, but I always remember there was that that reserve section that was That's not right. was not built. But your but your. So I may add additionally to the the change in the marketplace is there's currently a liquor store component to the marketplace, mm -hmm. and that will be going away. So we currently okay. Water Fresh Farm currently holds a section 15 license mm -hmm. for beer and, and wine, mm -hmm. and we will surrender that license once this expansion takes place. Okay. I have one more question, if I may, um, and I was interested to see, we received very many, many, many letters, um, you know, pretty much all in support, so that speaks very well to you. Um, I was concerned that, you know, there'd be a butter notification because I wanted to hear from people that lived in the area. Uh, you have a lot of fans throughout town, but sometimes it's different when you're the, when the, you're the neighbor next door, uh, and, and I was, um, you know, quite pleased to see that I didn't see any any of the concern letters that I thought I might well, it's interesting you, you mentioned families coming in and one of the learnings that we've had is you know as, as Ted has built out this business is the demographics of the people walking in and it's really even in the tap room space it's becoming a family environment so mm -hmm. we, we see a range from infants to grandparents and everything in between so it's really mm -hmm. become a nice setting and a gathering place and mm -hmm. folks are enjoying Mm -hmm. Well, just to the question of neighbors, and as I said, I did not see, you know, concerns on the part of neighbors, and that speaks very well to you. I know you've been great. You've been good neighbors, I think, and you've been a wonderful addition to the community, and that, that's certainly evidenced by the outpouring of support letters we got. Um, I did have a question, though, on your patio area. It, it said in the description that it was enclosed by walls. I wasn't sure. Is there a roof, or is it is it enclosed but it's still outside and open I'm so thinking we're about noise and sound yeah okay so, so it will be open to, open to the air open to the air but not visible from the street uh-huh okay so presumably whatever sound there is would be somewhat contained by by the walls it won't it will be somewhat open but not entirely correct correct I'm, I'm good. Sorry to take up so much time. So with the changes, will I still be able to get my plain bagel toasted with bacon, egg, and cheese? <laughs> is that, we'll make that a priority. Is that, still, <laughs> that piece of the business will continue? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, secondly, uh, and I, know, I think I know the answer to this, but I want to ask it publicly. Uh, Mr. Twenty, have you had any incidents reported uh, under your alcohol license to date? I have not. 
we've been very fortunate. Uh, we're pretty pretty uh, diligent in you know taking our responsibility very seriously down at Waterfresh Farm, and uh, we're very pleased to say that there's not been <coughs> any reported incidents back to us. Uh, we even keep a log, and we've had a, a couple situations where uh, we've denied service or we've. Uh, um, I think I even may have uh, turned away someone who didn't have an ID who ended up being one of the town's efforts. Uh, but we have records of those. Um, but there have been, you know, uh, I think it, there's been a terrific outcome over the last year and a half since we've had our first pouring uh, permit. And um, we have had no incidents. Okay, last question. Please don't take this the wrong way. Yes. Chief Lee, is your uh, recommendation that we proceed with this uh, license for expansion? Yeah, we have no. Uh, violations or uh, all the concerns that we have were addressed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Twenty, uh, I'm seeing, as I'm looking at the diagram of the building and all that, can you tell me, is the uh, aging and packaging area, is that a new uh, building? Yes. So that's a physical expansion. That is a, uh, a transformation of some greenhouse space with uh, 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 some packaging space for our brewery to increase production. Mm -hmm. Yes. So currently, what's your capacity, and then what's the new capacity going to so be? So we can do about 2,400 barrels a year right now, and with the new capacity, we'll go to 4,800 barrels with further expansion in that new space without any further changes, just some more tanks coming in, up to about 7,000 barrels. So uh, it's uh, still, by all measures, one of the smallest breweries in the state, um, but uh, we're fortunate that there's such terrific support for our business. and clearly uh, an opportunity for us to grow and, and continue to hire local folks, add jobs, more sales tax, bring more tourists into town and so forth. So okay. we're pleased with the, uh, you know, the, the plan is that uh, this expansion um, is, is part of the entire uh, step growth for us here. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so one thing, um, Mr. Kamala, looking through our notes in advance, I saw that there were still some outstanding questions between adequate water service for the fire suppression system and um, question on the part of the DPW about adequate sewerage. Uh, those are not really within our purview, but are we in a position to, to approve this with those still outstanding? My understanding, and I believe John Westerling and Chief Lee, um, and Chief Slemon may be here, my understanding is that those issues have been resolved. Is that right? Well, obviously, if they don't have water and they don't have enough sewer, I guess they wouldn't be wouldn't be opening. I just want to make sure we're doing this in in the right yeah. order. Everybody, they're nodding over there, so I guess we're good to go. Okay, am I ready? Then? Okay, beautiful. Um, so my only my, my no, uh, the only question is about the forty eight when it, when when it was originally put in. Remember, there was, a, there was a, an edict that came down from the governor, and that's when I was educated on as long as it's a farm. And one of the things that, that came up earlier was the size of the farm versus the size of the brewery. Does that, I just need, need a lawyer to explain that to me because um, uh, you know, as I have part of my, um, uh, one of my motions brings in, you know, if I remember something came through from the from the building inspector and, and all of that, that he was confused whether or not the size, if the size mattered. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, could you, since since you're here, could you explain that to me, if, and and whether or not that uh, this has to be a condition in the uh, in the motion? Well, as a proud Irishman, I'm going to say that size does not matter. <laughs> what matters is the actual product that's being produced and the product that is being grown on the property are hops and other vegetables and fruits and those will continue to be sold 100% on the property the additional area that we propose to grow hops will allow more hops to go into our beer so it isn't a matter of size because what we're doing is continuing the exact same use that we're doing now, but we're actually gonna use more of the products at the marketplace in our product, and we're not gonna sell to off-site uh, off third-party vendors. So it's actually more compliant with 48 than it currently is. 
would be, I submitted a letter to the town, and it's a lot more involved, but it's not a matter of size, it's a matter of product use. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay, and so if, you, if I can beg your indulgence now, I have, we have to open up a, uh, a second uh, public hearing. Hold on, I'm gonna get my glasses. Okay. Chair will obtain a motion to open a public hearing. The street acceptance will accept the whole public hearing consider accepting the following streets recommended by the planning board as public ways Legacy Farm South, Cobbler's Way, and Singletary Way. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's suspend it for a moment and get back to this one. Thank you for your indulgence. We're again running a little late today. Okay, so now I actually I'd like to. Uh, uh, open it up to the uh, public if the public has any questions for the uh, us or the applicants on Start Line Brewery. Wow. Any, anybody in support? <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. Is there a gentleman coming up? Oh, I think there's a coming. man coming up. Oh, there is somebody coming, coming yes. up? Or you just cut through? No, he's coming out. You can't do that at an auction. You'll, you'll be buying something. I know. Hi, I'm Joseph Baldiga. I'm a 20-year resident of Hopkinton, also a member of the 26.2 Foundation, and also on the Chamber Board of Directors. I'm not speaking on behalf of the board or the 26.2, um, but I would uh, advocate strongly for the board to support the expansion. Um, Mr. Twinney and the rest of the crew at Startline have been great civic uh, community members. Um, to start with, and I think they'd be a strong addition to the town. Uh, Mr. Twinney has been very supportive of the foundation, of the chamber. If you've driven through town, you've seen the banners uh, up. Mr. Twinney was instrumental in getting those put up. Um, they're holding that big marathon spectacular on Monday. Uh, Mr. Twinney has been very supportive of that. Um, as to the expansion itself, I, Mr. Twinney and Startline have been great for my marriage. We've eaten in town. <laughs> uh, we've eaten in town more in the last year at Startline because they have the burrito and beer nights on Wednesday nights. If you haven't been there, it's awesome. Um, but it really has made us patronize a town uh, facility. Usually, Ted's has been the default place in uh, Westboro. Startline has been awesome. But the only hesitation is that you can't get seating necessarily. They really need the expansion. I think we'll see much more activity if we grant the expansion. So, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is <clears throat> Patrick Sansonetti. I own 150 Hayden Row Street and I live at 154 Hayden Row Street. I'm in a butter of Waterfresh Farm and, and Startline Brewery. Um, I've written a letter to the board. I'm sure you've all received it. I won't reread the letter, but I would like to make one point, maybe two. Um, to me, this is about two businesses, one being Waterfresh Farm, who's been a strong supporter of many town activities. They've been an excellent neighbor. They've fulfilled every promise and every request that the neighbors and the abutters and probably the town, to my knowledge, has made. They're transitioning their business, and they're moving it to another business uh, that's owned by Ted. Startline Brewery, who's, you know, for, to use a marathon pun, taking that torch and running with it. Uh, he's also been an excellent neighbor. Um, he's spoken to me many times about his uh, expansion. I've talked to him about some concerns. I know that he's been very open to uh, listening to the neighbors, the immediate abutters, but also the surrounding sound. So as an abutter, I'd like to express my support for this change in this application uh, on both sides. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Wade Marshall, 7 Appalachia <coughs> Circle. I'm also president of the Hopkinton Running Club and a director of the uh, Hopkinton 10K that we had last year. Uh, I just want to talk a few minutes about the support that the folks at Starline have given us uh, over the last year and a half. Um, they've hosted our, as mentioned earlier, our burrito runs that we have once a month on Wednesdays. Uh, go with the Running Club. We're about 300 strong, uh, about 200 or so, maybe two thirds live in Hopkinton. So they host us once a month uh, for, you know, we do a short run and then come and have a burrito and a beer afterwards. Um, as far as the 10K goes, they were instrumental in a, their sponsorship of us for that. 
Uh, they helped drive uh, registration to the site. They donated their time. They donated the beer sales that we did after the race to go to the uh, Pay It Forward scholarship that we'll be presenting to two Hopkinton High School students uh, this, uh, this coming graduation. Um, I would really urge you to uh, approve their uh, permit because they really have been supportive of a pretty large and sometimes challenging group to uh, corral into one place. So, thank you. Wait, I think I have about five or six pictures of you inside of my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> it's really surprising with this marathon physique that I haven't been featured on a beer can before. It's amazing how smaller you get. Yeah, I know. It's insane. Thank you. Hi there, Mark Hyman, uh, 12 Hidden Brick. Um, I also wanted to express my support for this. Um, I, I won't go on at length because you have plenty else on the agenda. Um, uh, but Ted, Laurel, and the whole crew have been great additions to the town, and I think their expansion's been wonderful. Um, and personally, I'm happy for their hours to expand a little bit, so they're open when I drive back from work. But, um, but I think this is great. The one thing I, I just wanted to um, ask that I heard anew tonight and um, may not be an issue, but I, I did hear something about uh, live entertainment, and I'm not sure if there's already a special permit in place or if they're going to need to apply for that, but uh, um, you know, certainly um, putting on my other hat, we'd be happy to take that application if that's what's needed. So, thanks. Uh, good evening, uh, Scott Richardson, President of the Hoppington Chamber of Commerce. In the immortal words of our town moderator, most everything's been said, but not everybody has said it. So again, I just wanted to uh, echo uh, everyone else's endorsement of this project. Again, Ted and his staff uh, do a super job, and we really are looking for them to continue with uh, supporting the community, and this is a good way for the community to support them. Thank you. Okay, Chair with Tim, motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Public hearing is closed. Okay. Discussion? Anything? Um, you know, I'll just start and say that uh, I think when Mr. Twenty first came in front of us uh, and he was looking for more space than he started with, uh, I was one of the first people to hesitate a little bit and try to slow things down. Um, Mr. Twenty, over the last year and a half, has been an incredible member of the community. Um, I've spoken with him a few times. I haven't gotten to start line enough, in my opinion, um, but I wholly endorse this expansion. Um, he's, you know, again, been an incredibly member, uh, an incredibly responsible member of the business community, but he's also really, uh, you know, jumped in feet first and trying to be a member of the community and, and make his mark on Hopkinton, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Ms. Wright? No, I, no questions, Mr. Twinney. You've certainly done a great job moving to Hopkinton, giving back every time I turn around. There's something else Start Line's doing for the, for the community, and uh, it's just the kind of business we, we like to have. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fully in support. Thank you. So I am totally and completely in favor of this. Mr. Twinney has been an outstanding member of the community since the uh, since he's come into into town, and I'm appreciative of that. Uh, the only question I have is on the expansion of the hours. They follow within all the the uh, legal purview that we need. Yes, they do comply with the the, the board's alcohol policy. Okay. No other questions. Thank you, Mr. Twinney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You ready for a motion? So just, we, just have one three, we have three motions, actually, that yeah. we have Mr. Yeah. Kamalo. Uh, just one point of clarification for the board and the public. Uh, the comment that, the, that we received from the building inspector uh, indicates that there's still a continuing conversation between um, the applicant and town council. Uh, and the suggestion is that if the board is inclined uh, to approve the uh, the three applications that the, the, the board's approval be conditioned um, on compliance with zoning. Uh, in other words, the, the zoning question is still being discussed between the councils. 
Got it. And, it's under, it, and it, it falls under the purview of the building it's built. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve Startline's application to amend its licensed premises as specified in the submitted materials and on the conditions that prior to the issuance of the license, uh, number one, Startline obtains a determination from a building's inspector and zoning off enforcement officer that the use complies with local zoning, and number two, that Water Fresh Farm return its license to the town. So, how long will it take to vote? Oh, Give me a second. Second. Okay. Further discussion. So, um, Mr. Kamalo, is, is will this can this be resolved um, uh, quickly? Is that is it going to affect uh, anything that uh, Startline needs to do? Or anything? Uh, um, <clears throat> our, our conversation with town council as well as uh, my conversations with Mr. Chen is that uh, uh, we have urged all parties to get to some mutual understanding as soon as possible. If I may, yes. uh, I received a letter yesterday from the town council asking um, several questions to allow town council to form an opinion. And uh, we will be able to submit a response to that hopefully this week. What I would request that if you're going to take a vote tonight and if it is approved that you hold the application package pending town council's report to the building inspector and the building inspector's determination as to zoning because zoning is a integral element, a required element, and we would rather prefer to know the result of that before going to the ABCC and then having somebody turn in a license and then receiving some potential negative report on zoning. So if you're gonna vote, I request that you would hold the application for, it shouldn't take through next week to get, I think, town council to form an opinion and advise the town. Okay, Mr. Powell, is that possible? I believe so. And I think the motion states that Startline obtains a determination from a building inspector slash zoning enforcement officer that the use complies with local zoning. All that that you just described would have to take place before he would go ahead and say yes. So I think we're yes. in good shape yes. with the motion. Okay, no, but they turn the license part in. Is that that's the second part of the motion? I think your motion is accurate. You can vote on the motion. I think the only wrinkle is is that if the motion is allowed, that you hold the application package pending determination by the building inspector. Just with one clarification, the this would work, provided that town council also tells us that we don't require an extension from the applicant, and I'm assuming that would not be the case. Okay. So. So my, mo my amended motion would include uh, at the end of sentence or point one and that the Board of Selectmen hold the application pending approval from. I believe the board, the board can vote. It's not holding the application. The board can vote. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, sending it to the ABCC via Form 43. And until we have all this other until you have the it just in the event the unlikely event there is an issue there that would need to potentially unwind the whole transaction. Does that need to be in the motion? I don't think so. No need. Okay. So my motion is a stand. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? So, so point of clarification. So now Mr. Chodaro explained to me that the marketplace is not going away. It's gonna be a little smaller. You can still get your stuff there. So is Waterfresh Farm ceasing to exist and this is all going to be start line brewing and it'll just have a little marketplace thing on the side? I was under the impression that these are going to be two sort of standalone but side by side businesses. What is happening with Waterfresh Farm that we would be taking that license away? So the, when we applied last time, or 10 applied last time, we were concerned about having two licenses in the same physical building. Uh-huh. Liquor. 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 Liquor licenses. Correct. 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 So in order to, to, to ensure that this process continues and, and the expansion takes place, Water Fresh Farm is willing <coughs> to return the license to no longer sell beer and wine in that part of the marketplace. Okay. So for clarification, 
it's mo it's strictly pertaining to the liquor sales that have been going on That's in right. Waterfresh Farm. That's right. The entity of Waterfresh Farm will continue to be Waterfresh Farm, and there will be Start Line Brewing. And this is simply talking about the liquor license. But just because we're, we're asking them to take their license, turn their license in, that's only their license to sell alcohol. It does, is not affecting the ongoing business operation of having Water Fresh Farm. Just want that to be clear. And if I may, the liquor license, the Section 15 off-premise liquor license would be turned in prior to Mr. Twinney picking up an expanded Section 19CN pouring permit. So one doesn't overlap the other. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. But as I understand it, to your question, this is all about the liquor license that Waterfresh holds. If Waterfresh, two years from now, for whatever the reason, decides that they're just going to go to Florida, then they get to go to Florida. This is not dependent right. upon them being. This is strictly the liquor license. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's why I asked the question about the 48 because I wanted to, because we, I, I'll admit that I was one of the guys giving you a hard time when you first came in because I was saying, wait a minute, you know, how can you guys step, you know, put in a manufacturing facility, but and at the end it's worked out great. So that's why I'm wondering, with just the expansion, why the, the, the all of a sudden we're talking zoning change, and that's why I was confused myself, so. Uh, if I may? Yes. Yeah, so the, we've, we've done as, uh, we've worked hard to meet with a number of departments to plan to get to this point. Um, when we first came to town, we submitted through uh, the building department and the uh, zoning enforcement officer, Chuck Cadlick, the uh, position paper that our growing of hops and our agricultural position for the brewery was compliant with the 40A zoning on the property. So you had a 40A business with a farm stand, the Tadaro Water Fresh Farm business, you had new starting <coughs> brewing agricultural uh, growing of hops and a farmer series pouring license. For some reason, we're relitigating it all over again. And frankly, I don't want to get frustrated by it, but I'm deep into this gentleman's pocket. We've supplied legal notices back to that office. We're getting a four page questionnaire about all kinds of information. We're a little frustrated, but we'll continue to proceed and I'll keep paying. But I, the zoning thing is, is an emotional thing for me because it seems like the, the things are changing. I know that lawyers and, and you know zoning enforcement bylaws and so forth are very important. I think we're fully compliant. This is a unique business. This is agriculture. There's a unique uh, set of circumstances here with these commercial businesses protected uh, by the agricultural rules of the state. And it seems to be that we really just need to make a decision and get on with it. So. We're here today to ask that we get on with it, and uh, I, I hope that we can wrap up the zoning issue that keeps popping up for more and more requests um, so that we can get on with what we're trying to do. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Ready for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay. First one carries. Let's have the second motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve Startline's application to change its hour of permitted sale to be effective upon the issuance of Startline's amended liquor license. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve Startline's application to amend its entertainment license to be effective upon the issuance of Startline's amended liquor license. Second. Any further discussion? Can we just get a little more clarification on this one? So we're, we're, we're going to have additional entertainment and occasional live entertainment. Can Correct. someone describe occasional live entertainment to me, please? And does that include, like, you two back there? Or does that include, <laughs> does that include yeah. the guitar? Yeah, we, we are not going to become a concert hall or a nightclub. There would be no dancing. Um, we're thinking strings for brunch on the weekends. Uh, a Friday night acoustic act in our event space, uh, uh, you know, so we're talking about recitals and ensembles of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, live performance. So uh, this isn't uh, going to be a, uh, you know, rock and roll club by any means. So our intent is to just have, as I said, um, occasional live entertainment with uh, strings and uh, light amplification. 
You guys have had an impeccable record in town all along so far. If there's one thing that's going to get your neighbors juiced up, it's going to be noise. Yes. So if you turn those amplifiers up and all of a sudden you're playing rock and roll back there, I love it, but you have, that's yeah. just FYI. Yep. We'll, we'll hear about it, right? Application said no nudity, so we're Sorry? Good. If the application said no nudity, so we're good with that. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's on zone for that. That's, that's on, so. I think it said no male. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. I thought that's okay. okay. We have a motion to second. Any further questions? I thought that's what Mr. Gasset was here for. <laughs> okay. Oh, all those okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's uh, continue the public hearing on the street acceptance. Okay. This is an annual event leading up to town meeting where typically the planning board proposes um, new or older streets for acceptance as public ways. As road commissioners, this board is required to hold a public hearing. Um, all the abutters of the ways have been notified of the hearing as well. And at least a couple of the developers are present this evening if there are any questions. Um, the planning board has provided the street acceptance report that you see uh, before you. They voted that last evening. Uh, we have street acceptance plans that will be filed with the town clerk. Uh, a couple of the developers are still refining the plans and adding a few notes to them, but I spoke <coughs> with the uh, engineer reviewing them today and everything seems to be on track for filing with the town clerk before, um, before the vote. Uh, Did you see any flat problems or anything that have delayed this? DPW did inspect the streets today and uh, this evening provided a list, and I believe John Westerling is here, that can address those. Um, the developers are prepared to address all of those items before town meeting, I'm sure. I did speak with one today who is definitely committed to addressing all of those, and that is uh, regarding Singletary Way. Excellent. Thanks. So, uh, do they have any questions? I have a couple of questions if I could please. So and maybe you just touched on this line, but I was thinking about something else. Legacy Farm South, has the final binder been applied? It's it's fully complete. It's fully complete. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm all good. Uh, and if 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 this is gonna sound a little weird, if the developers are here, if they could raise their hands, please. So Mr. Cheever's not a developer. No, he's a part of that. I'm sorry? He's a partner. He's a partner. So which development is that? Cobbler's. Cobbler's Way. So, Mr. Chair, I have to recuse myself from Cobbler's Way. Mr. Cheever is a wonderful human being, and someday I might do some business with him, so I have to recuse myself from that particular vote. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> Mrs. Stein? No questions. Ms. Wright? Nothing. Wow, you would get my boy hat on. No, no, no. Yeah, and, and, I, and I went over the whole thing. Earlier today. Mr. Westerling. Good evening, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. Just hot mic. Well, we did our inspection. Uh, there are a few punch list items, but I have spoken with the developers and they are committed to completing those items before town meeting. So, provided that occurs at town meeting, I can provide a positive recommendation for acceptance. Okay. So, um, any, anybody, any any butters, anybody from the, okay, there aren't any. So, chair request a meeting to, uh, request a motion to uh, close public hearing. So moved. Second. For a discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The uh, public hearing's closed. Okay, does uh, anybody want to, uh, any, any discussion? Uh, we want to make a motion to accept the um, streets. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen uh, Except the following streets recommended by the planning board as public ways. 
Legacy Farm South and Singletary Way. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold on one second, please, Mr. Chair. I looked at the, the so I, I'm moving that we vote to accept Singletary Way and Legacy Farm South uh, for public ways and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire, thank you, uh, by gift, purchase, or eminent domain, right. any land or interest in land necessary for such laying out. That's the motion. Except the, uh, Second. Friendly amendment? Okay. All right. Okay, then in that case, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Okay, that, the chair will entertain a, entertain the same motion for uh, uh, Cobbler's Way. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstained. That one carries. Okay. We accepted three streets. Beautiful. All right, moving on. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Mr. Gassett, always a pleasure. My pleasure. You're, you're right. <laughs> okay, let me get back on, back on schedule here. Uh, Budget Capital Plan update. We also received an update from the Town Manager and the Appropriation Committee's review and proposed FY 2019 operating capital budget. Okay. Um, the Appropriations Committee has begun its review of the comprehensive town budget, uh, including the uh, operating budget as well as the capital budget. Uh, yesterday, they met with the school department as well as uh, engineering and facilities. Uh, I believe so far the discussions have been very productive, forward-looking, and working towards uh, formulating a recommendation by the um, Appropriations Committee ahead of town meeting. Uh, in terms of the discussions with the school department, I believe all questions were answered with regard to the operating budget. Uh, there were follow-up questions that were presented with regard to the TEF field and my understanding is that there was an a, there was an email that was shared late this afternoon uh, from Jim Bishman addressing some or all of the questions raised by the appropriations committee uh, specifically I think what I heard at the meeting were the following uh, there was an interest in the appropriations committee uh, understanding the the, the the private fundraising uh, component of the project, uh, especially the, the timing of when that, uh, when the funds from the private fundraising could be made available. Secondly, there was an interest in understanding the financial performer, i.e. there have been uh, statements with regard to revenues that may be generated uh, by the fields, and thus the Appropriations Committee is interested in seeing that financial performer. Um, there was also an interest in understanding how the electricity bills will be paid, uh, realizing that these fields may be open until 10 p.m. and there's lighting that is proposed. Uh, and then finally, there was discussion and an interest in better understanding the budget information, which in fact may have been presented as part of the, 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 the meeting packet last night. Uh, however, now that the bid process is complete, I think the Appropriations Committee wants to better understand, to better understand the budget components of the project. Uh, in terms of facilities, I think uh, the committee spent some time uh, discussing with Dave Del Toro, the town engineer, uh, the implications of uh, the town assuming responsibility for centre school. Mrs. Starr, any questions? No. Not at this time. Not right now. Okay. Okay. Fine. Annual town meeting articles. What is that? We'll continue with review of the annual town meeting warrant. Consider and finalize pilot questions, review draft motions, and take positions on articles, including the town manager sponsored articles. Uh, we will share with the board the updated town meeting warrant and motions documents. So these are the motions. And this is the warrant.
Okay. Um, it may be helpful, Mr. Chair, with your permission, uh, that the board continue the discussion that you started at your last meeting regarding the turf fields, uh, specifically where the, the board is going to be placing um, the turf field article as a ballot question um, for town election consideration. So doing that, so basically we're, we're talking whether or not it's going to be inside or outside the limit. Yeah, that, that is correct. And in fact, this is, this is perhaps part of the comments that we made earlier um, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, specifically that the ballot question simply addresses if the borrowing is going to be excluded. Mr. Kamala, could you go through um, all of the all of the funding sources for this project and their status, please? Yeah, based on based on my understanding, there are three broadly identified prospective funding sources for the project. Uh, the first component, which has already been approved, is CPC. That CPC funding source is broken into two. Uh, there's one component, I think it's approximately $1 million, that is funded directly from a passive and active recreation and CPC reserves. There's a second component uh, in the amount of $720,000, um, and it's earmarked for lighting, light, lighting, and it's been identified in the votes that were taken by CPC that the intention is to borrow the 720,000 uh, to be paid for in the future uh, from the CPC reserves. That's the first grouping. The second grouping is based on the article that was uh, presented by the school committee, um, is a request to uh, either borrow um, or use any existing uh, town finances to fund approximately $1.3 million for the project. There has also been discussion of a fundraising uh, effort targeting approximately $500,000. So those are the three broad, broad funding sources that have been identified to date. Again, with the CPC component broken into two. So the CPC, the first component you talked about, uh, using current funding and, and reserves. Uh, what what are the reserves that CPC is re referring to? Uh, I'm not sure I'm clear on that. Yes, uh, in in fact, we uh, I'm in the process of scheduling a meeting with uh, the CPC chair. I do have questions in terms of whether the reserves are res the reference to reserves is with respect to FY18 reserves or future reserves. Okay, and then the second component. So there was a separate vote, and it's. Still CPC, but they basically want to take a borrowing and count on future CPC uh, payments, which come from the taxpayers in town. Um, it's added onto the tax bill, and then use those before they're collected. That is correct. Okay. And, and again, that's an. That's I know an that that's not. That I know that that's not our discussion tonight. Yeah. That's something entirely different, um, but I think, I mean, I, I definitely have issue with that. Um, now the, and, and so the number that is gonna be going forward at town meeting would be for the town to borrow 1.3 million for this project. At this point, the motion for this article is still under construction. Uh, it's. It's been the town's practice in past years um, with similar projects where the town actually borrows the full amount. And that's the request that is made to town meeting. So is it that we borrow the full amount or that we appropriate the full amount and borrow what we need to up against that appropriation? It's the authorization to borrow up to a specific amount and depending on the construction funding needs of the project, then borrow um, 
on those tins. Right. So, those so in so in that case, I'm sorry. I, I just want to finish my line of thinking. In that case, the full amount is three and a half million dollars. Uh, assuming that CPC has the million and the reserves aren't actual future collections, there'd be a million from there. So it's knocking it down to an additional two and a half million dollars um, that could potentially be the responsibility of the taxpayers again. Um, if that, if the five hundred thousand dollars in fundraising doesn't happen, and if the town meeting vote is against the seven hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars because it's future borrowing from CPC, which I'm not sure how they would have the authority to put something like that on the town meeting warrant. Um, but uh, if all that happens, then basically the town and the taxpayers are responsible not for the one point three million, but for the full two point five million. Correct. Okay. Uh, can you explain um, debt exclusion versus inside the levy limit? Uh, the differences in in the bar that needs to be be passed. Uh, yeah. So town meeting, the differences in the vote. Yeah, I, specifically, I think in terms of the of the town meeting vote, we, it, we need to be very clear that the town meeting vote is on the funds that are being appropriated. And if the borrowing is within the town's levy limit, uh, the required vote is two thirds because it's a borrowing. Um, should there be uh, an inclination uh, on the part of the board or an inclination on the part of the uh, town meeting uh, to um, add debt exclusion uh, as a condition uh, to the appropriation or the borrowing, uh, then a town election vote is required, uh, and only a simple majority would would be required to for approval for the, the ballot. Yes, component. exactly. Okay. At the town There's election, still two thirds of town meeting. Yes, two thirds of town meeting. Either way, for the borrowing. Okay. Yes, for the borrowing. So, just a comment to the board. Um, I know that Ms. Birchman made a comment earlier about uh, whether or not we send this to the ballot. Uh, you know, if we decide not to, then it's trying to get around the school committee's authority. That's not true. Um, in fact, it is the authority of this board to determine the funding of the articles on town meeting floor. So it's not something where this board is trying to take away the authority of town meeting to vote for this project, but it is this board's authority to vote for how it's going to be funded. And, I, and we just ran into that earlier today when we were talking about um, uh, trying to buy things for the town. And <clears throat> one of the members said, "Well, in, in a few years, when the when our when our borrowing goes down a little bit, and that only happens if we stop spending stuff borrowing against uh, against our future earnings, which is just sort of what we're just uh, future revenues." And uh, so that's why you know when. Me look at when I look at it, I, I believe we should do this under the levy limit because it's a, uh, it's it's more upfront. It's it's, you know, we're, it's one of those that you're almost paying for it out of your pocket as opposed to, as, as opposed to putting it outside so people don't really see it. When people see their taxes go up, they see they see the taxes go up in one level and then they see the debt exclusion number on another side. So so at the end, you know, it, it's it's people don't realize that uh, they're really paying for it. So that's, that was just, that's yeah, I think that the um, yeah the the headline each year is that the operating budget went up X percent, and there's never any true discussion about everything else that's been passed that's actually adding on to the tax bill. And each year, as these these projects are put as debt exclusions, um, it is it is protecting that levy limit, and uh, you know it basically makes these other things. Uh, Invisible until you have to write the check. And in fact, um, in in terms of the the authority of town meeting with regard to the two topics that have been discussed, I think we need to make this clear to the public that if the town meeting votes to approve borrowing, it may choose 
to make that approval contingent on a debt exclusion vote at a town election, but it does not need to do so. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to uh, respond to this question that the Board of Selectmen, regardless of what action it takes, or if the Board of Selectmen does not um, move the ballot question forward, that is taking away town meetings authority. That, that, that needs to be clarified. That's not the case. Town meeting may pass a motion approving the borrowing contingent on a future election. What then happens after that is then the Board of Selectmen are asked whether they are willing to schedule that election or not. I felt it was necessary to, it's necessary to clarify that to the public. Now, the counter on all of this is if it's not put out there as a debt exclusion and it's kept under, you know, within the levy limit, then as future years go on and as this, this debt is paid off, it's still part of that base within, within the budget and within the levy limit. So, you know, if this is a, let's just say it's 1.5, just to keep the numbers a little bit more around. It's 1.5 million over 10 years, and uh, our debt service is 150,000 a year. That 150,000 dollars is going to be within that levy limit for those 10 years. At the end of the 10 years, we no longer have that obligation, but that number is still in that in that base budget number that goes from year to year. So it, it's the responsibility of the people on the boards, both school and and uh, board of selectmen as well as the town manager and whoever's our director of finance at the time, let's just say the person's name is Chris. Um, <laughs> <a good> bet. <laughs> it's, it's up to them to be, you know, obviously keeping an eye on that and realizing that, okay, last year we had to pay that, this year we don't, um, you know, and the taxpayers themselves to say, all right, you know, let's, let's hold everybody accountable and let's not just let that $150,000 disappear into projects that, that we don't know about, so. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hood, do you have anything to say? Uh, no, I mean, we left off last meeting uh, where a motion was put on the table and then we sort of ta tabled that, uh, if you will, based on Mr. Deegan's uh, good input at the time. So uh, I, I personally still believe that the more people that see this and the more people that participate in the decision process is the way to go. And to make that happen, you put it at town meeting, which it already is, and you put it on the ballot, and you get the most participation, and you're gonna get the broadest decision about whether the community wants to build these fields or not. Um, so I still feel very strongly that we should proceed and put it on the ballot um, and take it from there. So you believe it should be a outside of the levy as opposed to a debt exclusion as opposed to within the levy? That's really the, that's really our only question. It is, I don't think it has anything to really do with the with the, the vote as much. Um, I personally think this should be a debt excluded item outside the levy that goes on the ballot so the most people possible can weigh in on it. Yes, as I mean I said a week ago whenever we last convened that I don't think the five of us should be deciding one way or the other. Now we know that that's not the case based on what we can do at town meeting either way, but I just, I, I love the town meeting form of government and the town meeting form of government includes going to the ballot two weeks thereafter and voting for candidates and voting for specific issues that come up that are significant issues. And I just think that's as messy as this can be, it's the purest form of democracy on the planet the New England town meeting form of government, and, I, and I'd love to see it continue, and that's been our tradition as long as I've been around. But I, I think it's your, 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 the, the argument that you're making is, is different than, than what, what we're charged with doing is, is figuring the funding source. And, you know, and, and again, I think that this uh, is If, just if I can just yes. step in just to maybe broker this a little bit. Yeah. I, think, I think what Mr. Herr is saying that uh, he has the impression that if this is also on the ballot, it's going to raise more awareness and bring more people to town meetings so that more people participate in the vote. I don't agree with that assertion, um, but I think that's what you're saying, is it? I think more people will go to the ballot. 
I'm not sure about town meeting, but the ballot yeah. is part of town. So I, yeah, so I, yeah, more people may go to the ballot, but at that point, it doesn't it doesn't have any bearing on whether or not this project will happen or not. Right. It depends on what happens at town meeting, and, and, and we can go back to the town meeting discussion. And I'm not entirely clear, having sat through about 17 of these now, that we are the decision maker on the funding source. I think the motion in the article at town meeting and town meeting is the decision maker on the funding source if the, if the motion stipulates where that funding's coming from. It can be changed, it can be amended. We could uh, say right now, th that's what Mr. Kamala's point. We can, at this point, we could say we want it to come under the levy limit. And then at town meeting, somebody could, could make an amendment saying, no, I want it to be a debt exclusion. Then we have to come back and, 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 and have, to put, have to put a- uh, Yeah, I agree with that, uh, that's right. That's, a, that's my point. Town meetings makes that final right. decision about but, but, right, funding but, source. But whether or not, but as soon as the town, as soon as the town says we want to borrow the money, and it's on, it's, and it's within the levy limit, it, it happens. So, so let's look from another perspective. Then, if we vote to put it on the ballot tonight, town meeting has several options between now and the middle of May. All the town meeting members, including us, we all have several options between now and the election day. If we vote not to put it on the ballot tonight, then the options become limited. It's going to happen at town meeting. No, it's still the same two. You still the same two options. Same options. They can either do the no, they, they, no. If somebody wants to put it on the want to put it put it on a ballot, you put it on a ballot, and we have to have another meeting. So we could put it on a future ballot, but then we could have a lot of discussion at town meeting about the the efficiency of going forward now, the possibility of cost increases based on it, in, inflation and other issues, et cetera. So I think we can sort all that out. But I think not having it on the ballot in May of 2018 limits what will be discussed at town meeting in May of 2018. And I'd rather see it be a little bit more of an open process. Yeah, and I see it as, as hiding the cost, as a, as a debt exclusion that, that just goes into that pile of debt exclusions that keeps going up every single year. I see it. Yeah, I see it as putting it on the ballot is an endorsement of having it as a debt exclusion. So, so there, there, there. I think we could do something about that. I, I obviously don't think there's a majority of the board that endorses the project, but we could take a vote tonight to place the ballot question, place, place the question on the ballot, and then we could take a separate vote tonight on that article number as to whether or not the board endorses that article or not because that's part of our process of all articles, right? So I think you can place it on the ballot and say, I don't support it, the majority of us don't support it, but it's out there for the residents to discuss and vote on. I think you can have two votes on that. So, so, but to your point, Mr. Chair, a second ago, I don't want to hide it inside the levy. That's why I'm advocating that we have a debt exclusion. If we don't put it on the ballot, and maybe we could put on a ballot a future year, but then there's all kinds of it's complications. Not hidden, it's not hidden in, in, in oh, the levy limit. No, because all of a sudden people say, my goodness, my taxes went up 8% instead of 2.5%. And then that actually people see that, that, the, that, the, um, that they're paying for it. Right now, we're, we, we could, we're fooling ourselves saying the taxes are going up 5.8%. And oh yeah, but in September, oh yeah, it's, but we also have this chunk. That, we, that the taxes were also going up. By That's exactly why you put it on the ballot. No. So they would know that they're voting for additional money beyond the operating budget number that we're talking about inside the levy. I don't want, I would prefer not to do it inside the levy. I think if we do it as a debt excluded item, then 10 years from now, it comes off the tax rolls to your point, and we don't continue to tax it that 150 grand or whatever that number is, and, and it's done. But then we don't, yeah. but See, then, I, so sorry. I was going to say the other the other side though is that um, if it's outside the levy limit and um, as as we roll forward, first of all, you're in creating in creating a possibly an increased gap uh, between what the levy limit is and what we are taxing. So you know, over the last over the last few years, you know, we've made it you know very public that we've been doing these. Um, uh, underrides, thank you. Underrides, and we've been taking money off the table. Right. We can't, we can't be sure that future boards are going to do the same thing. So that's that's one of my concerns. 
Um, I want as much as we can to be inside that levy limit because I want every penny that's spent within the levy limit to be well thought out. And, and if we're going over that levy limit, whether it's because of a big project or, or something else, I, that's what brings more visibility to it, is when all of a sudden we need to do an override uh, for, for our, our services. Now people are going to start paying attention to what's actually going into the budget. So if, you're, if, you're, if you would like to see this as much as possible inside the levy limit, including this field's project, then you wouldn't vote to, support, to put it on the ballot because that's going debt excluded. If you go on the ballot, you're going debt excluded unless town meeting right. changes the exactly. motion, right? Exactly. So you take that option off the table, mm -hmm. and then we go have the discussion at town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that and, is and certainly by, and, within and, your purview as a member. Yeah. I personally still think we should put it on the ballot, so. But I hear what you're saying, and I'm happy to have that. If that's how it plays out, I'm happy to have that discussion at town meeting. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be up front, you know, I mean, I think that I think that if that number stays, you know, in that million to a million three range and we're getting those fields, I think that's a great deal. And I think that it's it's good for the town. It's good for the kids. Um, and I don't have any qualms with that. It's if things start creeping up, whether because of, you know, a lack of fundraising or because what I have a very difficult time and and. You know, I don't want to make a big deal out of this because I haven't had a chance to hear a lot of details about what's happening with that $720,000 of CPC funding. But I have a very difficult time um, endorsing a borrowing from that group uh, against future collections because that's a, that's a program that the town could also vote to opt out of in future years. And so, again, that's, that's money that from another committee altogether, they're basically putting something out there just to take this borrowing and then have it trickle down into into the tax base. This wouldn't be the first time that's done. In it may not be. In it's, it, I, I'm state. not saying it is. I'm, it's mm -hmm. it's the first time that, that I've been aware of it. If that in fact is what's happening, which again, I just heard about this this afternoon. So. Yeah. Um, and and I think that I mean I have I have issue with that. Because I think people will notice it more if they if, if we have to announce the taxes are going up eight percent this year or six percent or seven percent whatever the number ends up being, then oh yeah look we held it at five percent aren't we great? And but there's there's a million two over here there's another four point four there's another fourteen million for, for well did you make that announcement when we bought the school the library the DPW no and that's why exactly but you're, exactly but that's one of the things that. That, that actually is chaired this year that I, that I really noticed when we were in September when we were when we were setting the setting the tax rate. It's like wow, my tax rate what, what, didn't we go down? It didn't go up much. But then we had that whole other chunk of the of the and that's what killed our budget system. It was is was the uh, what's the why, why is this Fields project any different than those four projects? It's, it's all the same. Two years ago. again. Be, well, look at there's a big difference in scale. First of all, mm -hmm. uh, in looking at the long term effects. Yeah, this is nothing yeah, compared to that. Yeah, but, but we, we that was fifty million. This right. Million. No, but we we couldn't put the DPW facility inside the levy limit. If you want to put it inside the levy limit, I'm okay with that. You know, if somebody if, if somebody at town meeting wants to, wants to put it as a debt exclusion, they still have the option. If this doesn't go on the ballot, I'm absolutely going to advocate that we pay inside the levy limit. So, excellent. So, and you can do that. You have your vote at town meeting. Too. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Mr. Chair, I move that the board of selectmen uh, place a ballot question or a question on the ballot for the May 2018 <coughs> annual election, specific to uh, funding the. Turf Fields project. Mr. Kamal, is that motion in order? Yes. Is that accurate? Is that enough language to address the obvious question we're trying to resolve here? Yes, it does. And in fact, what, what follows would be uh, tomorrow morning we'll set the ballot question and if the board approves it and send it over to the town clerk's office. So I have a motion on the table, Mr. Chair. Do a second. Second. Any further discussion? 
Yeah, I just, I'm sorry, actually, no. uh, Ms. Wright, you, Go, you hit nipple. I'd just like to say again, I think that I think that the board voting to put this on the ballot is uh, an endorsement of the funding, uh, the, the funding means and having this be uh, a debt exclusion. Um, and that's, and that's what's going to direct my vote. And I think if we can, if we can fit it under, under the levy limit, we should be paying for it. Do you have my motion to start that? If I just <laughs> speak my two cents, I, I like things that force us to live within our means and keeping it within the levy, levy limit does that. Um, and I think that the debt is what's really, you know, busted the budget for us in, in, in many ways. Um, but I'm worried that if we don't have the option to fund it that way, um, if it's inside the levy, it's, it's, it's another debt obligation that's a fixed cost. And w we keep adding up all these fixed costs and the amount of our budget that has we have any control over gets smaller and smaller and if you look at the projections we've seen for the next few years the costs keep going up um, our revenue from new growth is leveling off and dropping um, we are using up our excess levy limit and you know, if this becomes built into part of our regular budget as opposed to an exclusion, I fear we're going to get to a point where we're going to be facing a shortfall for balancing our budget, and then it turns into an override, and the, if the override doesn't pass, then we're looking at basically cutting services to pay for turf fields. Um, I, I hate the debt, but it does give us an out to pay for those things. Otherwise, it's all thrown into the one big pot out of which comes all our services. And I'm looking at the trends over the years, and um, I, I, I'm just I'm just really concerned about what's hap going to happen to our revenue, our regular anticipated revenues um, down the line. So I I haven't decided yet which way I would go on that. But I'm not ready right now not to have that option. Um, I think, sorry, I, I just want to say one thing. It should be made clear to voters if it's on the ballot, but we probably won't be able to do that. Uh, I think there may be people that think if they vote against the debt exclusion, they're voting against the fields. They would need to understand that if it's passed a town meeting, voting against the debt <coughs> exclusion is not voting the fields down. It would be just simply changing the way we pay for it. It's, I mean, if, if anyone doesn't want the fields, the town meeting is probably the place, the only place they have. But if the motion at town meeting, to your point, if the motion at town meeting says, including, you know, a vote of the town election through a debt excluded article, then it would have to pass at the polls as well as the town meeting. If the motion doesn't reference that, and even talks about inside the levy, I mean, we can figure all that out, then yeah, that question would be moved at the ballot. But I would prefer that we do it both ways, both the town meeting and the ballot. So are you saying that the ballot question could say, how do you want to fund this, debt exclusion or levy no. limit? Usually it's just a debt exclusion, no, yes or no. Yeah. And if yeah. it's no, then you revert to then you revert to the levy limit. That's basically what gets passed the, the town meeting. The article could say, I think the article of town meeting, the motion at town meeting would specify okay. if it's debt excluded or not. And if it doesn't pass at the ballot, then that even if it passes at town meeting, then I think it fails. Mm. Mr. Kamal? If the motion at town meeting indicates that the borrowing is contingent on a successful ballot question and it fails at, town, at, at the election, then it doesn't move yeah, forward. That's right. Okay, so at yeah. town meeting, you specify that this is to be a debt exclusion. You don't give a choice. It's we, we're making a decision that we vote as a debt exclusion. No, we're doing that. If now. that's what I the know, motion, I know. if that no, if it, if no. at town meeting, if that's the motion for the article under consideration for the fields, mm -hmm. that it has to be debt excluded, and that's what passes, then yes, the ballot has to pass. If at town meeting, 
it goes up and the motion is instead excluded and someone walks to the microphone and says I don't want it that excluded I want it inside the levy and it passes inside the levy and yep. th that amendment passes yep. let's say the let's say the motion the original motion is dead excluded mm -hmm. and someone makes an amendment to the motion and then that amendment passes and then we take the vote on the article again with the amendment saying mm -hmm. it's inside the levy mm -hmm. then it passes a town meeting it's done and what we put on the ballot tonight if that's what we do is moved mm -hmm. okay so we do make a funding decision at town meeting it's not no, just it can be it can be amended at town meeting. Yeah, yeah. If, we're, if we say if we right. if we make a, a motion to make a debt exclusion right now, then it goes to town meeting's debt exclusion, and yeah. somebody else has to go and change it again. Yeah. Just to be clear, whatever happens at an election is binding. It can't just be moved. Elections are elections. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. Well, at the but, ballot. Yeah, but I think what Mr. Herr is saying is. Uh, if there's a ballot question on there for taking the borrowing as a debt exclusion and at town meeting the article or the motion is amended to say no we don't want this to be a debt exclusion we want this to be inside the levy limit and it passes now the ballot question has no bearing on anything it has no okay correct just wanted to make sure that people understand that elections are serious yeah yeah elections matter we all know yeah, that exactly. <laughs> yeah Okay. Um, just, just yes. you know, commenting on on Ms. Wright's uh, comments. Um, you know, whether it's inside the levy limit or not, it's the same money. Yeah. Um, yeah. The taxpayers are going to be paying the same amount. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if it's inside the levy limit, then there is a possibility that in future years there is more pressure uh, on the budget to stay underneath the levy limit, mm -hmm. or there's there's an override. Um, in my opinion, the override brings more visibility to how the town is spending its money, and you know it, uh, it, it brings more eyes to it. You're gonna have you're gonna have a lot more people at town meeting if you have an override that's out there. But to your point, a few years back there was an override that failed. That was the new school. And uh, then uh, we had the to school. go back and make some accommodations. And if there was a budget shortfall, because this this amount, this fields thing is baked in the cake now, suppose, <coughs> so you have to go for an override and the override fails, then you would need to go back and start to make but that's, cuts that's, or judgments, that's the adjustments. Taxpayers, right. That's the taxpayers, uh, you know, letting their voice be known as well. Uh, and again, you know, whether it's inside the levy limit or outside the levy limit, my opinion is if it's inside the levy limit, it, it just sheds more light on everything so that in situations like that you know people do have to go back and say how do we how did we get get here and they're going to look at yeah. how the money's being spent and they're going to have a more direct say in everything i just hate to end up cutting police and fire to pay for turf, turf fields <laughs> somewhere down the line no we just have to but no we just it just it has to become known you know, we can always pay for stuff we just have to we just have to tell I, I don't i don't see this creating any distinct change no. in whatever trajectory or you know pattern we have when we look at our budgets and the increases from year to year um you know i think that it's these it's these extra projects that people each year will start to investigate a little bit more if if that's the will of future boards to keep them inside the levy limit um but i don't see this creating any big you know sea change in, in spending but I think it brings more awareness so ready for a vote all those in favor of what are we voting on <laughs> all, all yeah. those in favor of if, if, I, if, yes. if I may it, it just for clarity I was looking at the wording of your motion Brian um, would you be amenable to replacing the phrase debt exclude um, with the following phrase um, exempt from the provisions of Proposition Two and a Half? Mm -hmm. Can you read me my motion, please? Yeah. To place a ballot question on the May 2018 annual town election to exempt from the provisions of Proposition Two and a Half. The uh, turf fields project. Yes, yeah. So that yeah, is the, the definition of a debt exclude. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's my motion. Yeah. You still have a second? Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Nay. Nay. It's going to be a fun town meeting. <laughs> I think the, through the chair, um, the remaining articles are the financial articles that are sponsored by the town manager. In past years, the board has not taken a position on financial articles until you hear um, how the appropriations committee has considered those articles. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> perhaps you may want to defer the discussion. Of how the many are there? From the count, so the town just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're running out of days. That's my yeah. concern. Yeah. Can we just uh, uh, can we just go through and get a thirty-second synopsis of each so that uh, you know when we're starting to hear numbers? It, yes. Okay. Um, the first one is the FY 2018 Supplemental Appropriations and Transfers. This is an article that deals specifically with any budget adjustments that need to be made to the FY 18 budget. Yeah. So moved. Okay. <laughs> I have no issue with this. Yeah. So do you want to vote right now to support? I mean, these are, yeah, yeah, some of these are just the routine. housekeeping. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Mr. Chair, can we put a standing motion? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I request yeah. a standing just affirmative this. motion to recommend annual town meeting articles. Okay. So I'll move. Second. Okay. All those in favor? So we have the first one in front of us. We've yeah. got to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Opposed? Staying. That motion passes. Yeah. Unpaid bills from previous years. Uh, so. We don't have the specifics on this one yet. May come, may not come. No major surprises coming out of I don't believe so. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta pay our bills. So yeah. but, but, but again, I, 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 I think it's a routine. Yes, it's a, it's a routine a second. motion. Yeah. Second. Well, we have a standing motion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just, just yeah. vote. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. And then the next one is the excess bond premiums. Uh, the board considered this last year. We're continuing that practice. And in this case, we're considering the Excess bond premium from the town's 29 million um, general bond uh, obligation from 2016 bonds dated 20, December 1, 2016. Uh, and those um, projects are listed uh, on page three. It's the Center Elementary School, uh, 38,000. DPW facility, 43,000. Library renovation, 29,000. Uh, Grove Street water tank, 5,000. Water main replacement, 479, and Mickey School Auditorium, 959. So excess cash that we have from these projects that we could just use to, against other projects so we don't have to go borrow. Cool. No, actually, I think it's, is it, is it excess cash or is it just that we haven't, uh, we didn't find the need to yes, we borrow? borrow this, we can borrow, just reduce these to go borrow somewhere else. Reduce yep. elsewhere. Yep. See what I mean? Yeah, I thought it was just reducing these and it doesn't get borrowed. No, but I by reducing these, we still have the authorization to borrow to that 118 grand amount. Mm -hmm. So then you can go borrow, if we gotta go borrow somewhere else, we'd have this 118 right here. So we wouldn't have to borrow as much. See, no, I thought that uh, these numbers were allocated uh, through votes at town meeting for these projects. Right. And so by taking these away, we can't just reallocate from one project to something else that we think we need. I think that's what yeah. this is. Yeah, you know, here's what this does, Brian. I'm it's asking projects, you. It's projects, yes, it's projects approved to town meeting. Right. In the borrowing process, premiums were identified. And what we're now doing is to reduce the amount authorized to be borrowed for such projects. Um, so so and this board, for, for the center school, the for the center school, um, replacement article on October of 2015, Article 1. We 
we don't need this $38,384. Right. Right. So it's just wiping, just wiping out. That off that it's one wiping it off. It's wiping it off. Something else that we can go get without. No, it's just wiping it off. Okay. That, yeah. Even it's better. All right, my mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Even better. I think we're ready for a vote. Okay. Mr. Chair, call for the vote. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. The, yeah. The next two ones are the traditional um, tax relief articles that we have presented to town meeting every year. Uh, the first one is an additional um, seven, the town set up, I think, 75% uh, percent reduction um, for qualifying uh, classes un, uh, under mass general, um, mass general law, I think it's section 59, section five and a half. You know, is this the one that um, Representative Dyke was talking about? No, Senior this, this is no. This is the traditional one where there are different classes that have been identified, and oh, yeah. this authorizes the town to afford an additional seventy-five percent reduction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next one. Yeah, and then the senior tax relief. This is also the one that was approved. Um, I think in the last year, the two town meetings or one town meeting where we offer an additional tax exemption for qualifying seniors um, relative to the increased value of residential real property as a result of alterations or improvements. Okay, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next okay. one. Next one, um, setting the salary of the elected officials. As you know, um, last year when we were going through the charter review process, town council identified that the personnel committee actually had no authority to move this motion, so it now falls on the town manager. And I'll be asking the selectmen to move the motion on behalf of the town manager. Any and this, this is focusing specifically on the town clerk. Town clerk. Okay. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Okay. Oh, Tom Clark's leaving now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never again, you guys. Mm -hmm. You can try. Yeah. <laughs> the revolving fund bylaw and fund transfer, you will recall through the modernization law, the town is now required to pass a bylaw for revolving funds. We started that process last year. Uh, specifically in this uh, round, there's a new revolving fund that's been proposed, one for the TEF field user field fee fund. Um, the others were considered previously. Um, we will also, will also be recommending that uh, the town um, 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 delete the revolving fund for the ambulance fund. Instead, we'll be using the receipts reserved for appropriation for, to cover the purposes of the uh, fire department relative to operating the ambulance. Okay. okay. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carries. And then this, the following the following article then sets the spending limits for the revolving funds. Uh, we're still working through that. Perhaps the board may want to hold on that. Chapter 90? Uh, chapter 90, the board covered that before, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Transfer to General Stabilization Fund. Again, I think the board should await the final review of mm -hmm. the budget by the Appropriations yeah. Committee. Similarly, with the transfer to the other possible mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. OPEP? Yeah, yes, that's OPEP. Okay. And bond premiums, we are talking with. Um, our bond council on specific language for this article. So the ones we're passing on this evening, we're recording that because we got to make sure we go to town meeting having done that, right? So yes. Okay. okay. So we'll do that. We'll one seventeen again. Yeah. yeah. So I'm suggesting that we avoid. Okay. I mean, we got between. How many meetings between now and town meeting? Two, three, one or two. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it for me. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Mr. Kamal, just a question. Um, at the end of the warrant, 
Usually there's an article for the funding for the Central Mass Mosquito Project. Not that I care about mosquitoes that much, but it's always there. It's not there this year. Are we not doing mosquitoes? Who's past too pasty? Too pasty? <laughs> There's an explanation. I'll have to look into uh, that. Yeah. Just, I always notice it was always one of the wrap-up end articles. And it's We're still going to have snow on the ground, and mosquitoes, mosquitoes don't they like they the won't snow. Yeah. <laughs> snow will kill the grub. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. on reports. Yeah. Report advice. Yeah. Um, just one more. Sorry. So just one more. Yeah, on, yeah. on page twenty, there's the the, the administrative component of the CPC appropriation, where CPC is paying for the administrative services performed by town hall staff. It's usually 10,000 bucks. Do you expect it to be more? Okay. All yeah. those in favor? Aye. 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 Those stand up and carries through. All right. Any others before we go on, Mr. Marlon? Um, do they vote on the pilot agreement, clean energy? Yeah, I, 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 just for the record, there's also the pilot agreement for clean energy. We're still working through that. I don't have the details to share with the board. Yeah. And then there is the animal nuisance. Page 34. Page 34. The nuisance, in, oh, yeah, 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 the nuisance and dangerous animal found. Town manager's course sponsoring this article with the Board of Health and Animal Control Officer. Anybody have any questions? No, I just get too many copies of this thing. I know, I got on that foul. Um, <laughs> I'm sure town council has figured out how this fits in with some of the agricultural protections. Any barking dogs I can see, but... No, I think town council's been involved with the parties in drafting this, and making sure it complies with so state law. Who, who wrote this? As I read it, you know, now, maybe I'm getting picky, but no person shall allow any animal or fowl, including a chicken or rooster, to create a nuisance or disturb the peace, uh, peace and quiet of any neighborhood by reason of excessive noise, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. No person shall allow it. Does that mean that if I see it, I'm obligated to go and Take shoot the rooster? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Yes. I hear so a rooster you now all the time. It's I love yeah. it. I think it's a cool yeah. and, 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 <laughs> well, and, and, and aren't we killing, uh, yeah. uh, partially killing the, 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 the whole, you know, uh, I heard once when we were trying to add the word residential to, to the agricultural district. We are an agricultural community. You know, we, we have farms everywhere. I mean, actually, I don't think we really do anymore, but actually we get water fresh. Um, but you know, is this? You know, are, are we being too restrictive here? Do we? Is there something that exists already, and we're just modifying it? We have a, a barking dogs bylaw, so some of this arose out of that. And uh, in reviewing that, I think it was discovered that it doesn't comply with current state law. So part of that was bringing that up to up to standard. But the rest of it, I think, was from the Board of Health and Animal Control regarding some complaints about noisy animals. Well, so I, this I just is about I, somebody's rooster next door. This has this has nuisance bylaw parallels. With I agree. <laughs> I know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the word <laughs> excessive, and that's why I asked about it. Perhaps yeah. the proponents could come and. Yeah, I, I want. Yeah, I'd like to. Well, uh, I personally, I, I I like to hold on it rather than yeah. ask for a motion. Um, well, that's why I questioned yeah. particularly the word excessive I knew that and then I agricultural you. because. You know, there are certain protections for agricultural things, and roosters crow. Is that excessive if he, you know, sounds off once or twice? I, I mean, what's excessive? I don't know. I don't have to listen to him, but. Well, also, like the <coughs> subsection A, 
no dog owner or keeper shall permit the dog to become or remain a nuisance dog or a dangerous dog. Or dangerous. So I guess I'd have to look at Mass General Law, uh, <coughs> Chapter 140, subsection 136A and 157. Off the top of my head, I think that's where that's kept. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're good, and, uh, you're good. Um, I, I guess, how do you determine what's well, a dangerous dog? Those terms aren't defined in, in the statute. Yeah. For some reason, that slipped my memory. That subsection. So successive. This, this is successive. Be about two hours. Yeah. 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 That, that's what happened a couple years ago. When people came up and they argued for hours about the dog park. People funneled out of the place, and then they wanted to talk about uh, restricting the distance a level three sex offender can be to a church or a, or a daycare. And people are funneling out. They care more about dogs than they do rippers yeah. near a church or a school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this will take. Still, I, I still go back to uh, the first town meeting I was at as <laughs> as a member of the board, and we were talking about the crosswalk that goes from town hall over the library. And that was a solid hour of conversation for $15,000. <laughs> the next article was for, I think it was a six or $700,000 fire truck. There were no questions, and it passed unanimously. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> yeah. So okay. this article about the animal, where did this come from? This is the first I've heard this one. Yeah. So. Board, board of Health, did Mary animal Pratt write control. This? <laughs> she wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Board of Health and Animal Control, and the town manager got involved um, when the discussion extended to enforcement and, and hearings. So they're the ones that are sponsoring it on town meeting floor? Yeah. yeah well, if they want to sponsor it on town meeting floor, that's their privilege, that's their right, but this, this just seems like it's going to be a very tough one. Yeah. yeah. We start talking and we about might want to yeah. counsel I think, them on I think they should. I think they should try to bring the current bylaws up to code or you know however state standards and let's keep you out of it and let's keep the enforcement piece out of it until later until that's clear up yeah I, I, I know at the beginning we were considering two parallel processes and then we ended up combining the two processes so we can go back to the original process where we'll specifically look at strengthening and enhancing the existing bylaw. Okay. Um, and then on page 42, on page 42, utility easement, hate and raw. This is very important towards resolving the double poll issue. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> I wasn't aware that we had that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's simply allowing the assessment that will uh, facilitate, that is resulting from the relocation of the poll uh, as part of the service to the marathon school. Yeah. They're already in. They're already in the ground. The poll's already in the ground? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. No, okay. Okay, call those in favor. Go ahead. Okay, any further questions? I'll let up. Judge Bess have some questions. I'm all set. I'm going to abstain. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed and abstention? Okay. Motion okay. carries unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Did I miss the Clinton Street easement? I do believe you did miss that. Yes. On okay. page 41, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, this is an easement that is required for general municipal purposes, including stormwater management and sidewalk purposes. Is this the Burt Whistle home? The, the house where on we, the corner? It, the white house on the corner where the engineers. They were very is this excited. pipe already in there yeah. too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were very I'm really excited. surprised we had two articles that have already been done. Yeah. And they have a lot of town meetings. We, we just hire those people. I like that. I like that. We find those people. That's yeah. the Tom McIntyre way of asking for forgiveness rather than permission. Right. <laughs> okay, with that, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Anything else? Anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah, I think we're all set. Again, as we said, the pilot will be discussed at a future meeting. Okay. Yeah. And then and the follow one. Okay, liaison reports, board invites. Anybody have any liaison reports? The um, elementary school building committee was meeting tonight in the elementary school, in the new Marathon Elementary School. Oh, oh we really? missed that. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that is coming along very, very nicely uh, under budget, and they're doing a great job there. They are ahead of schedule, and they are going to be um, open school year next year. Okay. In case anyone was curious, center school's going away. Anything else? It's not a liaison report, Mr. Chair, um, but uh, I think that in, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, probably just due to uh, the crowds and anticipated uh, discussions tonight, uh, we were a bit remiss in mentioning the loss of the town uh, over the last couple of days. Right. I'll, I'll let you take it. Yeah, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm over at the senior center a lot, and um, and uh, Cindy Chesmore is going to really be missed. Um, you know, we, we we just lost her the other day or on Monday. And uh, as a result of COPD, it's uh, uh, it's going to be a, a large void in the um, at the senior center, and um, yeah, we're, we're, we're really going to miss her. Uh, my uh, condolences to the whole Chesmore family, um, and to uh, everybody at uh, at the senior center. Cindy was a good egg. She was a good egg for a long time around here. When you lose people like that in town, it's a, it's a big hit. Yeah. She was, uh, uh, in, in my experience, she was a, a quiet voice, but persistent voice in advocating for the seniors in town. Uh, and what she was able to do with the relatively scant amount of money mm -hmm. uh, that goes to that budget was pretty amazing to me. Um, and also finding other sources of fundraising, and she'll definitely be missed. She is smiling down on you, where you just said she is a quiet voice. <laughs> smiling with a big, huge smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, Same in my she, experience. Yeah. She's done for this. Yeah, no, she was awesome. Yeah, yeah it, it's you know taking it from the basement to the basement to the new building, and then just being a, an absolute fixture there, and, and advocating constantly, and. and, and and it's it's not just the seniors because that's what she's most known for. But from the time I moved to Hopkinton, Cindy has always been involved in town things. She's mm -hmm. lots of other stuff besides just the seniors over the years. She's she's always worked tirelessly for the town, so she'll be missed in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, I, I also I want to apologize because. Um, we were taken up uh, at the beginning of the meeting, and, uh, and I, I wanted to open with this even before the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I, I got distracted, so uh, my apologies. Mr. Chair, I'd be interested in understanding more. I mean, I've worked with Cindy now for 17 years in Hopkinton uh, since I got involved, and I've, she's been around the entire time, so I, I, I don't know how long she's been in the role and how long she's been at the Senior Center. I'd be interested in finding that out. But I think we have to do something permanent to commemorate her life and her dedication to the seniors of Hopkinton. Um, I don't know if she was always a quiet voice uh, because she was a very uh, uh, articulate and tenacious person in interacting with the MWRTA, which I serve on, and uh, in other ways uh, over the years. Um, always a very respectful uh, but strong voice and uh, I just think we should find a way to commemorate her permanently in Hopkinton. I don't know what that means sitting here tonight because this is all fresh and very sad, um, but we've done some other things recently and I think something along the, that scale might be considered. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Mm -hmm. So to build on, I mean to, to pull from a point there, and I want this to go out, I don't want anybody to think that the term that she, you know, that the fact that I said that she wasn't a quiet voice is derogatory. I have had 
years and years and years of interactions with Cindy where they have been fun and funny and happy, and she was a, a great person. As a matter of fact, the last interaction I had with her was after our budget meeting when our oxygen tank blew. Yes. And uh, <laughs> made a lot of noise. You know, when I, I saw her a couple of days later, and she made a very funny comment about it, which I won't, I won't speak of here, but she always had a great sense of humor. Uh, her husband, another one, great sense of humor. Her kids are great. Um, so the fact that I've only been in town government, not politics, government for uh, a couple of years, I've known her 46 additional years, other than those last two I've been on here. And she's always been a hot ticket, funny, great person. So I want to make that perfectly clear that I wasn't, that there was no <laughs> Intonation of derogatory uh, discussion here because there wasn't. I think she was a good person. I shared with you guys all an email today. I don't know if you read it or not. A story of when she was a patient of mine. I won't get into it. It was hilarious, um, but it was um, she was a, she was a good person, and she she will be missed. And it's great to see the people on the board here. Like where are the people in? 50 years, hopefully, that when we go, you know, your grandkids or whoever that's going to be sitting up here, not yours, but that they're going to say, you know, that Ted Stone, he was a loud mouth, but he wasn't a bad guy. You know, <laughs> I don't expect anything to be named for me. Maybe something down at Cornell's. That's fine. But, but yeah, there's a couple these, guys are, these are, are right now that probably wouldn't be so bad. <coughs> there, there are, are shoes that this generation of people that are passing now. That are that that they're leaving yeah. tremendous voids yeah. that we can only hope to fill. Yeah. Uh, Cindy's one of those, and, and there's a lot of people yeah. over the last 15 years that, as I've come, you know, taken more of a, an active role in Hopkins. When these guys pass, they're they're huge voids to be filled, and you know it's 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 up to us and you know more people coming in and, and to try to fill those and. Uh, it's a it's a tough it's a tough void to fill. It's an impetus for you to work harder. Yeah. Excellent use of the word impetus. Yeah. Okay. Was that a bet tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Kamala, town manager's report. Yes, we have a conflict of interest form for the board to sign. This is an issue that came up uh, when we when the board was considering the 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 revisions to Marathon Way, um, Marathon Way is part of the Main Street Corridor project. The request comes from Beth Kelly. Is there a copy of that or something? It wasn't in the packet. Oh, we have a copy. Okay. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. That's the one that lives on uh, Park Street. Ash. 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 Yes. Now, Mr. Kamala, without yet seeing it, um, having served for many years on that board, I understand that part of the makeup that's required is that it include one resident of the district. Um, so I would hope and assume that we accommodate that understanding that not we, every. Can we just appoint somebody? Well, we not well. Not everybody's a resident of the district. No, I no. Mean, the person I know the woman, the woman who was just appointed was a member of the district. I, f I forget. Remember, there was one that we delayed on, and then got on the following week. So the question before us is: Should Ms. Kelly recuse herself from the Hopkinton Center Historic District vote specific to the downtown quarter project? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, as a member of the historic district right. discussing the Main Street Corridor project. And I should mention to the board, in fact, based on her conversations with town council, she did not participate. She was not in the room when the town conducted or when Musty OT conducted the public hearing. But she was asked to leave, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the point I wanted to make is that. Um, you know, uh, this sort of an issue came up at one point in discussion of the Upper Charles Trail Committee and, and people that might be butters. I mean, when you're on the district commission, not every item that comes up you would have a financial interest in. Um, if the guy across the common wants to change the color of the front door from red to blue, that really doesn't affect 
your property. Whereas something like changing the configuration, this situation where all of a sudden you, you don't have traffic coming down to your house or something, that could have a financial um, a financial ramification. So I, you know, I hope we. And she's and identified it's this where reconfiguration it might be. of the common yes. that yeah. it's thought that it might have a financial ramification in some way. I, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Perception. That was right. Yeah. yeah, I would strongly recommend. Beth does a great job on the historic yeah. district center commission and in town in general. I love her house and where she is and the whole thing. But I would strongly recommend that she not participate in anything specific to the corridor project. It's like I try to stay as quick and clean as I can, and I get up and leave when we're going to do a little road thing, just because. Don't say it. You know what I mean? Don't say the S word. Uh, it is actually the S word. Um, so I, I would strongly recommend that we encourage her not to participate. So what's the vote you're looking for? No, I think we, we just accept it. Uh, all, all we have to do is accept her. Accept and sign. Yeah, yeah, there's a motion, there's a motion, Brian. Here's a copy. Where's the motion? I request this, uh, I'll, I'll just, um, hold on. Place on next page, sorry. I request the motion to determine that the financial interest is not substantial as we deem to likely to affect the integrity of services the municipality may expect from the employee. Uh, or, uh, so is substantial or is not substantial? I would suggest it is substantial. She just not participate in this particular issue in Hockington as a member of this committee. Okay. And, and, uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Anything else? Okay, town hall update. Dave is here to walk the board through the milestones that have been accomplished to date. Good evening. obviously took place um, first six months or so. Um, it's stripped it's strip the building down to its studs and, and uh, floor joists. Um, as part of that demolition, there was a structural investigation done by the insurance company. Uh, and the town also hired a third party consultant to do a structural investigation. It identified some structural repairs that were required. Um, it also identified you know, some other potential building code um, issues. One of those was the um, sprinkler system or the fire suppression system. Uh, and whole or part was uh, out of code. Um, and so we, the, the town needed to retain a, another third party consultant to do a design for that. Um, there was a building wide removal of all the electrical wiring, uh, outlets, light switches, all the fire. Um, Alarm systems, fire alarm panel, the pull stations, the strobes, smoke detectors. Um, our, our new building management system had to be rewired, relocated. Uh, it was all centrally relocated into the basement. Whereas previously it was, um, it was actually installed where it would fit. There were panels on each floor, which kind of you know, wasn't the most efficient um, way to run that system. So there was an improvement in that system. Burglar alarm system had to be all wired. Um, all the devices <coughs> were replaced, and all of our IT wiring was replaced um, and upgraded from a Cat 5 to a Cat 6 to bring it up to, you know, the most recent um, uh, requirements for, for IT. Um, as part of, so that's all been all been done. While all that was being done, we, we, we did some first floor revisions. Um, we'll be able to see some of those in a couple minutes. It's more or less, you know, the main parts of the, the, the hallway was relocated from the side entrance. Um, <coughs> there was office and uh, restrooms were kind of swapped locations. Um, and as we moved the hallway and, and made some new offices, we had to 
you know, modify some of the existing HVAC systems and relocate some of them and add, add a couple spots. Um, all the new subflooring has been put in um, and, and all the sheetrock has gone up now and, and we're actually in the process of the fire suppression system <coughs> is about 95% complete. They will come back once the hung ceilings are in to put in all the, uh, the, the, the heads for the actual sprinkler systems. And the painting is a is probably more than fifty percent complete now. Um, once the painting is complete, uh, the ceilings will start. Along with the ceilings, we we actually were able to upgrade to uh, hung ceilings throughout. Um, we had some of the old <coughs> grid type ceiling systems from the 70s, 80s, which you know if anybody's ever worked with those, the, the only way to get up above them is to destroy them, um, and and that was unsightly, but quite costly to, to replace as part of the insurance claim. They're all being replaced with the, the hung ceilings. Uh, all the lighting that was damaged is being replaced um, to no cost to the town. It's being upgraded to LED lighting. Um, and then the finished floors will go in. Uh, and, then, and then we start the uh, relocation process. All that is still scheduled to, uh, to commence and finish up when, uh, as, as Town manager presented a couple weeks ago. I don't remember the exact date he gave you, so I'm going to try to prior, prior to conclusion of the annual town meeting? No. Uh, the 18th or 19th or something. No. The election no. Day, right? The election day. Prior well, that's a good yeah. day for move. Prior to that, I said. I think that's only three weeks away, so. Yeah, we, we, we're actually refining that plan. And we'll let the board know. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> so this board yeah. will not meet at town hall again? No, th this board will meet at town hall. We, we've made that clear today. <laughs> um, yes, this entire board can come yeah. to town hall whenever, whenever yeah. you'd like to. Um, so I just, again, th that, that's more, more or less the, the milestones of the town. Uh, a lot of work was done. This first slide is, is the... The slide on the left is the, the new sprinkler system. The new, we had to upgrade the entire um, fire line from the basement. Um, it had to split off between a wet system and a dry system. Um, we added a dry system for the attic space. Um, the attic space actually did not have any sprinklers, um, which was not code compliant. Um, and instead of instead of bringing a, a wet system up there with glycol in it, or we, we branched off and have a separate dry system that goes all the way up into the attic. The rest of the building is just straight water. There's no more need to add glycol because we didn't have some of, the, some of the sprinkler heads that were for the third floor actually went up into the attic to, to drop through the ceiling. So that's why we need the glycol in the system. <coughs> so the good thing is there's no more glycol in the system. Um, the building is now code compliant for fire suppression. Um, the, the current code requires, requires sprinkler heads above hung ceilings, which, so for every location where you have a sprinkler head that you can see, there's another sprinkler head that had to be added above that ceiling. Um, that's just a new part of the code. Um, but we, that was a considerable amount of work. You can see here in the basement, you know, there was an insulation that was added to all the exterior walls. Here in the basement, we left it open. Um, it gets painted with a fire retardant um, paint, so you don't have to put sheetrock up here in this area. Um, up here, I kind of skipped up to the third floor to show you some of the new, this is the third floor sprinkler system. Um, eventually, we will paint it. Uh, right now, it's just not painted. Um, this is for the third floor. It's all in the heated space, so we do no longer have to have glycol in there. Uh, and as you can see, some of the sheetrock has been done. All these walls <coughs> were, were stripped. Mr. Del Torrio, I, I've had a, a question a few times and you haven't been here. Um, so no fault of your own. <laughs> I don't know how that is. So I'm here all the time. <laughs> did we have to pay out of our pocket on this sprinkler system to get it up to code? Yes. Did we have a, a fire, so you, you said we had a fire suppression system in there before? Correct. So in order for it to go to code, we had to re-engineer and put a new fire suppression system. Yes. What was the reason that the insurance company didn't pay for that? Because- Council can give you a legal answer because
is that the, the, it did go back and forth with counsel and the insurance company. In short, it wasn't damaged. Itself, it wasn't damaged by, by, the, by the, the water damage. So would the building inspector have signed off with the renovations with the, with the old fire suppression system? Would it be legal? No. I don't. I don't no. Know. I don't no. Yeah. I don't yes. speak to the building inspector, yeah. but yeah, it wasn't. Or, or would anybody would, would anybody sign off on? It? No, fire yeah. was the fire department was not willing to okay. sign off on the water system. Right. Yeah. So I, the question remains, and I've asked it a hundred times. Yeah. Doesn't matter who's here. I don't get an answer for it. Yeah. Is I don't know of an insurance company that would do a repair on a building. And I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I don't know an insurance company that would say, you're insured, you have to be to code, but in order for you to be in code, we're not gonna pay for it. When that's a known risk, when they insure the building, if there's a loss, the things have to be brought up to code. When they, I don't believe when they insured the building that, that was, you know, at that time, it was up to code. Once you pull down all your walls and all your ceilings and all your, you know, you, in order to re restore stuff, you have to bring it back to current code. Right. So, you know, some of that code compliant repairs, uh, as the policy is written, if you have a claim, uh, if, if it did not damage that system, um, the policy doesn't cover the replacement of that. So, However, to get an occupancy permit, that that system would not be acceptable for right and, and well, legally the town manager contract can explain wise tomorrow in his office there you go <laughs> yeah. moving on exactly yeah but legally you. and contractually those are two two valid points but um validity in contracts and legal don't always don't always mix <laughs> um so here on the third floor uh, uh you know i tried to capture this picture on the left um this is coming into the entrance, the side entrance of Town Hall. This is kind of a relocated hallway um, that used to wrap around and come out near the clerk's office. Um, we will now have a kind of a common hallway that connects directly to the, uh, the foyer, the front foyer. Um, these will just be windows for natural light. Um, is there still a balcony on the second floor overlooking over yes. the select and room? Yes. We, we did add a door to that entranceway. So the, you know, sometimes you have double meetings. The, the two meeting spaces kind of overlap once in a while. We did um, enclose the areas up top as well as put in a, an actual door from the uh, balcony into the land use area. I'm not sure I captured. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. if there's any other back issues sometimes up there. Okay. Um, and again, this is this is actually the third floor where the the sprinkler system, the actual failure actually happened. It's been all Concom office. Yes, yeah. uh, th this is the new third floor sprinkler system. Um, this is the attic system that actually goes up into the attic as a dry system. Uh, and just here are some of the the town manager's office. Um, I only picked this because it shows the two different colors. There, there's a blue um, and a beige. I'm terrible with colors. Gorgeous, uh, absolutely gorgeous. This is this is more or less a picture from that doorway. I've never even seen it. Um, that was we, where we added. Where you just walk into the land use department. This is the concom area, uh, the IT office. Mm -hmm. This is where the the files used to be. Um, this is another uh, a picture of that side entrance with the wall painted. So as you, you can kind of, this was before. Um, this isn't the best picture, but of the clerk's office, we've reworked the windows. Um, you're going to have the beige up on top and the, and the, and the blue on bottom. And, and I have to uh, thank, give a, 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 a huge thanks to uh, Design Review Board member uh, Sue Ellen. Um, Sue Ellen. Stoddard. 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 Um, <laughs> she, she was brave enough to offer her services to pick wall colors and floor colors. And <laughs> that, was like, that was like two phone booths. <laughs> yeah, this is hard to, it's hard to show. This is actually the handicap accessible window and, and then the oh, okay. office window. The only problem I have with the blue 
blue is Ashland's colors. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I give a thanks out to Sue. I'm a big uh, fan of green and white. Because... No, I don't even like the orange, just the green and white. There's no orange. Well, that orange, I think, the safe. Uh, Connor's here. We're going to work with Connor on changing the color. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, safe. that's the that's orange. Safe. That's the, the orange. Color. I want to get rid of the orange. It's becoming gray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be sort of a, a battleship gray. gray or something like yeah. that. Um, and again, here's some just more pictures um, from the hallway inside the nice. new finance area. Um, oh. This used to be the bathrooms. We won't tell the new guy that. Um, <laughs> We relocated them. Oh, you mean Chris? <laughs> relocated to the end of this hall. There's now a men's, and, uh, well, actually two family rooms. But we haven't figured out the signage yet, but there's two bathrooms um, where Park and Rex used to be. Um, these interior offices will all have doors with a side light and a window, uh, and, and we're working on the layout of, of this interior office for the cubicles. And again, um, when you come in through the back door, uh, back to the side door, you're going to go left um, to go down this hallway, or you can go straight and it brings you to a door to this office, as well as to where um, HR will now be down on the first floor. There's two offices where the finance director and accountant used to be. Uh, I'm not sure I picked that up on this. No. But yeah, this is real brief to show that you know, the sheetrock's been done, the painting's probably close to being done um, this week. Um, and then once they do that, the doors and the windows for all these, sh I think might have started going this week. I, I haven't been able to get in there this week, unfortunately. But, um, hopefully by the end of next week, all the, that work will be done and we'll be starting on um, ceilings and, and lights. And uh, it moves pretty quick from there. Thanks, Dave. Dave, just a quick question. Are we able to make any better use of the basement space? That was always kind of dead space. That's a whole floor, floor's worth, ground level. There's some file storage that's down there. The dead space, you know, I think we can reuse it. There are plans, um, future plans for making that a meeting space mm -hmm. and possibly, a, you know, renovate that kitchen area, use dual use for meeting space as well as for, for a kitchen area. So is that untouched right now? It's basically the same as it's always been? Co correct. Yeah, that uh, miraculously didn't get damaged huh. a whole lot by the, by the water damage. Yeah. Um, some of the ceiling tiles with all the electrical and IT and fire that had to be rerun in building management system. Um, a lot of ceiling tiles might be replaced, but um, as of right now, it, it, it'll look about the same. It'll, it'll be less cluttered. <laughs> So it's it's same old dingy old self. Then nothing has changed. We're, we're gonna work on the uh, the colors. I've, I've asked Sue Ellen for a different color scheme now. Yeah. Maybe we'll use some of the same paint. But that that's for a kind of a future a future endeavor. Well, I will note that tomorrow. For those of you who remember dates, tomorrow is April 11th. And I believe that's a that's year one ago. Year ago. <laughs> it's a year ago tomorrow. The great flood happened. So it's been a long time. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Agenda item. Anything? So I don't have a future agenda item. I would like to take a second and note um, there was a lot of hard work that went on Saturday putting those banners up, going mm -hmm. from the center of town down towards uh, towards uh, uh, Ashland. Uh, I saw that 26.2 Foundation. Uh, I saw American climbers out there donating their time about eight hours, their equipment, and um, it, uh, it looks nice, and I like to recommend when people donate their time and equipment and people to town, I like to try to make note of it if I can. So good job to the, uh, to the powers that be that got that done, American Climbers. And, that, and we heard from uh, you know, Ted and yep. Mezzes and uh, uh, Tim Kildoff there at the Chamber of Commerce. There was just a lot of people. And, and all those that, that donated 
And one more interesting little fact on 420, yeah. April 20th, uh, that movie Super Troopers 2 comes out into theaters, and that the one that was filmed at the uh, on the uh, in Hopkins, yeah. ironically, on 420. That's all I have. And I'm just noticing that the next meeting is April 24th, so we only have one more meeting. I was thinking there were two. We said two. There's one before a town meeting, so we have a full meeting. All right, and then uh, we hope to see uh, everybody uh, Monday at the uh, start of the uh, 22nd Boston Marathon. Mr. Chair, I move to adjourn. Second. Any, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you at the marathon.